questions you pop up and what I'm talking about seems like I'm like ahead of myself or something like that, that's the reason why. So just wanted to give you the heads up for that. But again, hey there, fellow travelers. Now it's live and you actually are seeing it. Um, so now you know what the time difference is to kind of kind of check out those things. So today is just me, uh, Johnson, still dealing with a little remnants of some bad water we had in El Salvador. Um, we all got a little bit of stuff um, just because we, uh, you know, we knew you don't drink the water there. And we actually were doing purified water and had all the stuff. But one of the people that we were staying was just trying to be helpful and, and got us some water because we had none. And he just got it from the tap instead of going to the purification water part. He was just trying to be nice. And things happen. And unfortunately for Joss, some things are still happening to her. So... It does happen. I'm sure a few of you have all, all we've all had our <coughs> cases of some bad water that got us when we traveled. So, uh, so I thought I would do today because trying to help her feel better, um, working on putting some more videos together. I got my, 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 uh, some hard drives here to try to put some stuff together. It's funny because I've, I've got the text put in for differences between the U.S. and Europe and the amusement parks. I've got the don'ts of Strasbourg. Like I got to put the pictures in there. Got that ready. I had the uh, the don'ts of the south. Like getting everything's like almost done. I'm like, but I don't have everything done done. So <laughs> I figured we'll do a live feed and I can get some of those things done so we get some good videos out this week to help you out with your travels. And also, I know right now people are really starting to think about their spring break and their their summer travels and what they're gonna do or if they're gonna do stuff things like that. So I thought we'd do is just answer some questions to help you prepare uh, for whether it's spring break or summer travel or things like that or any other travel excuse me, topic you have um i want to get into it and i'll get into the, the questions soon um hunter and tiffany had some questions i want to talk about and terry um and we'll, we'll get into those but i just want to you know just welcome everybody uh try to start a little bit earlier today than usual usually start our live feeds a few hours later um just because um we have fellow travelers that are in europe and australia and all kinds of stuff and we were doing a lot of these what was you know an inconvenient time for them to wake up at three o'clock in the morning so i thought hey I guess I'll get up early and, and I'll do this. So it's, you know, 5.30 on the West Coast. So if my buddy Henry Martinez is out there waking up and wants to uh, join in, you know, we're there for you. Anyway, I'm going to go through some questions. So before we got started, Hunter asked, um, what vehicles are best if you're renting in Europe? So whenever, if you're heading to Europe to rent a car, which I, I do recommend, some places it's really it, it vital you do. Like if you're going through the UK, Ireland, I'm going to get to certain parts of France. I mean, renting a car, uh, Eastern Europe, it's, it, it really is vital to get all the places you want to go. Not that public transportation won't take you there. It's just more of a convenience thing. For example, in France, when you're going to the chateaus in the Loire Valley, you want to be able to go, 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 not go wait for the bus, wait for this kind of stuff. So you can actually get a lot more seen that way. And what we usually do is we don't get like that. We, we've done the little economy car kind of stuff when the boys were little. Now they're a bit bigger. So we would give them a little more space so they don't try to kill each other in the back seat. So we'll get like the uh, the SUV, um, European SUV. Well, it's a little bit more, but it, the luxury space is nice. But it's the equivalent of like a Ford Escape, like the small SUVs in the U.S. or like the big SUVs over there. So you're not having as, as big of a car. And I do not recommend getting a big car when you go over there um, like us version because with the streets the roads stuff like that smaller parking spots less parking in general it just makes life a lot easier if you have a smaller car when you're there and when you do rent most of the time it will be a manual transmission i know there is an automatics and they're becoming more popular but you're usually going to pay a pretty hefty surcharge to get an automatic over a, a stick so just have a heads up for that so hunter hope that helps you out um <laughs> Tiffany writes, best way to get from Helsinki to Switzerland, uh, fly. <laughs> I mean, you have to fly. Um, and Switzerland to Paris. Then, well, Switzerland from Paris, you could fly, but you can take the train and stop at some places along the way going up, depending which way you're going to go. Because if you're going from Geneva, you'd be, it'd be more like a straight shot over. If you're coming from Zurich, you might go through Geneva, or you might go up through Germany and over and around, like maybe via Strasbourg or something like that. Um, because if you're going to be going from Switzerland to, to Paris, there's a lot of nice stops along the way. Um, instead of just going to Paris, Switzerland, because I, I, we have some friends that actually uh, just did. They, they flew into Paris, and then they trained down to Zermatt, and they were they went skiing and went around Switzerland. I'm like, but there's places along the way. There's really nice places. Even if you go to Colmar and, and stop in there, and then going through Basel and, and coming this way to Switzerland. So there are a lot of options out there for you. Um, let's see. <laughs> 
Those who wander. Last trip to Sydney. Last trip, Sydney to Charles de Gaulle. Wow, that is a long, long day. Days. Uh, seven hour layover in Chang. Uh, booked the transit hotel and had a decent shower and sleep. Best idea ever. Yes. Here's one of the things is whenever you're having um, these super long haul flights, sometimes it's worth it to rent those airport hotels or those sleep things or getting in the lounge to take a nap and stuff like that. Because if you've got two 10 hour or 12 hour flights back to back, your body is, I mean, you can't sleep in those positions on those, those planes very well and you'll be in pain. And so sometimes it's best just to take, you know, suck it up, go get that hotel, even if it's only for a few hours, just to get some real sleep. Um, cause I know a lot of people they'll do, it's like, oh, well I get in and I'm just going to stay up all night or I'm going to sleep in the hotel and get that morning flight. I'm like, you're just going to be miserable. So when you land at the final destination, your back's all messed up. You didn't get any sleep. You feel horrible. And then that first couple of days are ruined on your trip. So make sure, you know, take the time. I know when we flew back from China, um, uh, we had, you know, it's like we got in in the afternoon and we flew out the next morning and like, oh, well you can stay in the airport. I'm like, no, we, we actually got a the airport hotel. We got that. Dropped our stuff off there, went into town to see some of Helsinki for the day. And they were having, you know, summer festivals and stuff like that. So it was real nice. And then we came back, had a real night's sleep before we had another 10-hour flight back to the U.S. Um, so make sure you're really, you know, kind of considering, like, what's the ramification if I don't get some sleep? So definitely try some of those things, okay? Uh, those who want are good to see you on there. Octave, good to see you. Francis, greetings as well. Uh, Brendan, I'm glad I, we can help inspire you on your YouTube journey. Um, global, global, everyone else asleep. Yeah, Liam just walked down half asleep. Oh, oh, hey, buddy. He's still wearing his clothes he wore yesterday. So, uh, how you doing? <laughs> Good. Yeah, so we're, we got some tired people here. So, you might see some wandering sleepy heads wander in here. So, there is that. Um, okay, so Eve Miguel is asking, what's the best hotels to stay in in London, Ireland, and Scotland? That's a lot of options. Um, if you'll notice on our videos, we don't do a lot of the best hotel to stay in or the best restaurant to go to and things like that. What we like to talk about is, um, for example, food. We'll tell you, here's the food you should have. Now you go explore and find a place that has that because, I mean, the Anthony Bourdain effect or the Guy Fieri diners, diners drive-ins and dives effect is real. And it's really cool because they help out these restaurants, but then people only go to that one restaurant. But there's some other stuff out there. So we like to give people the idea of where we like to stay when we're out there. You know, like we'll stay sort of by Victoria Station-ish um, when we go to London, just because we, that's where our friends live. And so we'll kind of stay there by them so we can have easier access to them. Um, there's no really cheap place to stay in London. Just remember there's there's the tube lines that'll get you anywhere you want to go. Same thing in Paris. You can stay lots of different places. We just like staying in Montmartre or right out, right not in the Latin Quarter, but right outside the Latin Quarter. It's another place we like to stay when you're there. But what I always say is like, you know, you can look at, the bookings.com, hotels.com, TripAdvisor to find what works for you. Because sometimes it depends just how long you're going to be in a destination. If a hotel or Airbnb or a Verbo or VRBO is going to be right for you. Uh, so there is that. So uh, Stefan Eugen Kruger, visiting Rio next week. Awesome. Have fun. Um, yes. <laughs> Turn out the world. Liam is ready for some cartoons. He is wandering around ready for that. Um let me scroll up here so I can see some more questions because we went, went through some bus. Blah, blah. <laughs> we just went through some things. Uh, okay, Oliver writes, can you give some recommendations for some good destinations around about June, preferably in Europe? So what's interesting is when you're going to Europe in the summertime, Europeans, in terms of their summer vacation, don't start till July. And especially in August, that's when it's really packed. So June is mostly international travelers coming in. You'll have, you know... Uh, backpackers like the u.s backpacking season starts like mid-may because that's when the college students get out of school and so then they start backpacking right after that and they go like mid-may through june and then the u.s families start coming like the first of june and then europeans start traveling the first of july also other parts of the world july 1st seems to be a big holiday day so june's an interesting time to go i like um going to portugal at that time uh because that's when they have all their festivals going on so you can have a lot of fun with the festivals but what's nice is I mean, Europe does get hot, but it doesn't get, it, I, I feel it doesn't get like oppressively hot until like July, August. So June's actually a good time to go. It's pretty much anywhere you go in, in June is going to be okay. Um, the only thing I would say is some of the um, low cost airlines, their destinations don't start till the end of June or maybe the first of July. So sometimes you won't get all the uh, cheap airline options going there. So, so there is that. 
So Tyler, cool guy, eighty-eight. Hello, I'm going to Chicago next month and maybe taking a CTA Blue Line from O'Hare to downtown. But concerned about pickpockets, should I be worried about pickpockets? Um, I mean, you can be worried about them. You always want to pay attention. Uh, I always tell people like the U.S. isn't so much a pickpocket place; it's just straight up rob you kind of place. So I guess look at it that way. Um, if you're gonna, I mean, it depends. Like, are you just having to carry on? You'll see other people coming in all the time. It just depends. Like, if you're coming in at one in the morning or one in the afternoon, there's going to be different things you'll look at. Okay. Um, okay, JLF3, looking to rent a house in Scotland for 10 days this summer. Want a century located town to base our operations out of. Any suggestion of where to look? Well, it depends what you want to do. Um, 10 days in one location, because Scotland, as small as Scotland theoretically is, it's not small getting around. Um, I might look at a place... You know, like there is like the Fort Williams or you can do the Inverness or you can, you know, it depends where you're looking at. Like you could base five days in Edinburgh and then, you know, you can day trip to, you know, Glasgow. You can go over to St. Andrews. Like there's a lot of stuff that's easy enough to get to from by, you know, in Edinburgh itself. And then use another five days um, like in Inverness. Then you can go see the Loch Ness. You can go to the Black Isle. You can go down to, you know, Aberdeen. There's, all, there's lots of castles around there. Uh, so it, it, I don't think a 10 day base for one to go out is probably the best way to do it. But if you did, I mean, it's just going to mean a lot more driving. Uh, so that's one thing I, I would kind of say there. Um, let's see. <laughs> George and Crossfield. Mark, what's the worst train system you've been on? Um, Hamtrak, uh, where I live, is always so late. Like at one point, they were 0% on time for 90 days. And that's over 30 minutes late. Um, so in terms of that, I mean, I've, there's been, I think the, the worst train, well, there's been a fun, there's some fun um, bad train experience. Not really bad, but just interesting experiences. One time we were in Portugal and our train broke down and we had to wait, they waited like two and a half hours for another train to come by. And they had us all like, you know, like Dukes of Hazard jump from one train to the other train. Uh, to get on this other train and so the whole train was filled up so we're sitting in the, the aisles of the train and stuff like that and this is before Liam was born we were living in Portugal at the time and, and we had Caleb like we were pretending to make campfires you know like to entertain him for the ride back and we were putting him up in the uh, overhead compartments just to keep him entertained uh, I remember that was that was an interesting ride and then there was a time we were going to uh, Ravenna from Bologna and in Italy, and it was like a hundred and five. It was like an insane summer, so like summer two thousand twelve, and it was just insane hot, like dehydrated. Like Liam was a baby, and you could see his head, like the pulsing in the head, because it was so. De you're like just pouring water on, trying to get him to drink, and the conductor's like, "Hey, got moved to the next thing because our air is broken and the compressor is broken, so it's like a hundred and fifty degrees in the other com compartment." So all of us come into this other one. So you've got like. A whole train in one wagon and we're all just like dripping i mean it's just like oh but uh, i mean honestly i haven't had really bad bad experiences on the trains uh luckily so there is that um scott neal hey stay at the balmore in edinburgh tomorrow congratulations buddy 30th anniversary uh give your lady friend my love and congratulations to her too and and that she's strong enough to stay with you that long <laughs> my scott's a good buddy of mine so uh there is that Come to Santiago, Chile. Actually, I was looking at some flights there recently. So uh, we're trying to figure out some more stuff. Because a lot of people like think we only do Europe trips. I mean, because we'll get comments that like, go someplace besides Europe. I'm like, we have hundreds of videos from Central and South America. And we really enjoy it. I mean, I used to live in Argentina and Brazil. And so I have, like, it's very, I mean, it's very close to my heart going down to South America. So we try to, excuse me, promote tourism down there by doing all kinds of videos down there. Like we just came back from El Salvador. We're going to Columbia later this year, so we're trying to get some more stuff up there. Ronnie Dove, morning, buddy. Hope you're doing okay. Oh, so those who wander actually suggested Sterling for that Scotland trip. Yeah, I, I could see Sterling working as a thing, but that's why I was thinking. It's, like, it's just a lot of driving out there. Daniel, thank you very much for the super chat. Okay, so his question is, we're deciding between a typical week-long Caribbean cruise versus a longer, pricier Panama Canal cruise. Do you think paying extra for the canal is worth it? Mm, not really, to be honest. I mean, it's cool to see it, to go through. Um, 
but if it's like significantly more expensive, I don't know if it's significantly more expensive worth it, because you could look at Caribbean cruises that just go to Panama City, and then you could do the day trip that takes you to the canal and comes back, and you know, it's pay forty bucks for that versus an extra four thousand. I mean, I don't, I don't know how much your thing is. I mean, it is cool. I know people have gone through the Panama Canal and they thought it was kind of a neat thing to do. Uh, you know, it's like, okay, I did that. That was neat. Um, but anytime you do a cruise, a lot really comes down to is what is on the cruise ship for you to do. Because since you're like, you get to the port and you have like six hours in port and then you come back, you want to make sure they have stuff that you're doing on the on the boats as well. Um, because it can get pretty boring on cruises um, when you're like, why, for example, I don't gamble. And so, like, when I've done some cruise before, they're like, they have their gamble and bingo and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, yeah, it's not my, my jam. You know, and you're trying to find something else to do. It's like, okay, they got a pool and an exercise room. So that's one of those things. It's because, especially when you're in Caribbean cruises, is when you're going into Aruba or you're going into Jamaica, like uh, Ocho Rios or something like that. Like, a lot of people are just like, oh, you're going right to the, the main tourist thing. And you're doing that. So the lines are long. It's overthrown, over, like, run. You're kind of, like, frustrated by stuff. So... That's why it's, I always say, make sure you look at all the destinations of what they can do, what you can do when you are there. Hey, you're even Israel. Good to see you on here. <laughs> G-R-O-D-T-5. Hi, Mark. How different is BC for a Torontonian? Thing of visiting this summer. Is it worth it? Honestly, I like Seattle better than Vancouver, and I love Toronto much more than Vancouver. Uh, Vancouver's got Vancouver's got a good food scene. And if you go out of the center, there's a pretty good uh, museum of the, the First Nation um, that, that you can go and see stuff there. That That's really cool. But honestly, I really like Vancouver for me. It was like, yeah, let's go eat and eat well. Going out and taking a, a go and see the whales. That was kind of neat. But compared to my time in Toronto and Quebec and, and Quebec City and Montreal and Prince Edward Island, I, I would definitely go back to Toronto and Quebec City 10 times before I went back to Vancouver. Um, but but on the other side, you can take the train down from Vancouver to Seattle. And I like Seattle a lot better. I uh, had more things to do. It was more expensive. It was funny, Seattle was actually more expensive. I felt it was more expensive than Vancouver. Uh, so so that's my, my little things, buddy. All right. So I see the coronavirus is popping up uh, in our feed quite often here. Hey, Michael, good to see you, buddy. So the coronavirus and travel. Yeah, this is a tough one because the amount of information that's coming out about coronavirus from China is rather limited. So we're not really sure is, you know, is the incubation period, you know, seven days or is it 24 days? And is it just the flu or is it like you're getting pneumonia right away? And so it is kind of a it's kind of a scary thing because you're not really sure there's not the information out there, which is why you can have so many. Like I've seen tons of videos on YouTube with travel bloggers, you know, having their masks on, you know, like coronavirus, you know, what do I do? And, and I don't know if they're really giving good advice. And that's why I haven't really given any advice on here because there's not enough information out. So I just follow the CDC's kind of thing, you know, avoid traveling to the regions where there is, you know, a big outbreak, um, you know, make sure you're washing your hands for 20 seconds. Don't touch your eyes, mouth, nose when you're walking around. I mean, that's one of those things when you're usually, you know, going to the flying through the airports and they have the, did you like our service? Happy face, smile face. You don't, don't, don't push that button. You know, it's like just, there, there's certain things you can do, you know, make sure you have your anti back wipes to wipe down your, your tray on your plane and things like that. Um, but it, it, it's a scary thing because you're not really sure where it's at, where it's going. I mean, it's all over the world now. I mean, there's, there's no way, um, there's no way of getting out of that, that, that fact, you know, cause it's, it's spread out. Um, but we just have to see, you see what's the mortality rate? What's the, um, infection rate and stuff like that. So again, there's just there's just not a lot of information out there, which is what makes it um, makes it tough. So Smeely, do right going up the Space Needle. I don't know if it's worth it. There's some cool museums out by there. The Pop Museum in Seattle uh, the, is actually a really cool museum. I do recommend that. Let's see. Yeah, L, L, L Luck. There is no good advice at this time. You're right. There is no good advice for the coronavirus right now. Let's see. Hey, Gui, good to hear from you in Sao Paulo or outside of Sao Paulo. Always a good time. Um, let's see. <laughs> Service of the Deep. Hi, Mark. Love your videos. I've been watching them for years. And I know that because he called me Mark and not Walter. That's how I know you've been watching for years. 
Um, I've been watching them for years. Would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Man, that's a tough one. Which is funny because Liam and I got chased by a bunch of ducks the other day. So maybe one horse-sized duck because you might be able to get away. Whereas 100 ducks, they just all come at you. So I guess there's that one. Um, let's see. I'm going back up for um, going back up for some questions here. The Texan Traveler. I'm currently in Paris. I want to visit London and Amsterdam, but Eurostar is very expensive without reserved tickets. Any other cheap options to get there? I prefer Grand Portation rather than fly. So one person mentioned the, the Flixbus. Actually, the Flixbus system, I mean, you had the Eurolines buses, and there's all these different bus things, but Flixbus, the buses are fine. They're comfortable enough for a bus. That's not that far of a drive um, when you're doing it that way, or you take the drive then the ferry over um, to, to England. So that would be your, your cheap option to do. And you'll see, I mean, you'll see people of all, you know, economic backgrounds um, going on, on the buses too. So you're not really too, uh, you, you'll be okay with that. Let's see. Diane Bettine, my husband and I are planning a trip to Paris at the end of March. Awesome. This will be our second trip and are debating going to the catacombs. Is this a must see? I thought the catacombs were actually pretty cool. Um, and I, you're right. I did not go my first few times I went to Paris. Uh, I went, it's probably my fourth or fifth time I finally went. And what you're going to do is, um, one thing is you don't see the pictures from my time there come up very often because the humidity in there made it, my camera lens always fog up and stuff like that. So everything looks like it's straight out of ghost hunters. So I, I don't want to, <laughs> put that in my videos to like say, oh, look, we're changing Walter's world to like the travel channel where it's only about paranormal activities. Um, but you go down, you, you, you'll walk down a lot. Make sure you have like non-slick shoes. I mean, at Granny is Mars, so you have good shoes when you're going. Uh, but do watch out for that because there's lots of steps you go down. It is, I think it's worth the experience uh, going. So if you're looking for something different and you've done the other sites, I would definitely do that. Uh, John, US TV, Toronto. What did you do in Toronto? Um, Actually, I thought the Hockey Hall of Fame was amazing. I mean, I'm not a huge hockey fan, but going to the Hockey Hall of Fame, you can't help but become a fan of hockey. I mean, it's done so well. Um, I thought that the ROM, Royal Ontario Museum, with their collection um, of, of dinosaur bones and all kinds of natural history stuff was just phenomenal. One of the best in the world for that. I mean, try, or Canada in general has such a wonderful collection of you know, fossils that that's a really nice to see museum that really gets to showcase it. Um, there's, there's, uh, let's see what else. Uh, we went to a bunch of different neighborhoods for like Jocelyn vintage shopping. And we, I mean, it was just really kind of a cool thing to do. And we were there in the summer. So we got to go out on the lake and kind of stuff. So it was a, uh, it was a really cool experience. So I like that. Um, okay. Ryan Fay, this is actually a question I, I think is important to answer. Our flight arrives in Madrid at 9 a.m., but can't get into accommodation until 3 p.m. What should we do and do with our stuff traveling with kids? So this is one thing we've started to do now is whether it is um, Verbo or you know, VRBO or, or Airbnb or hotels, if we're doing the overnight flight and we're coming in early in the morning, we will actually book the day before and let, excuse me, let them know, hey, we're getting in in the morning. Because what happens and then that room's already saved for you and you come in and the thing, the key thing is don't just book the night before and then not show up. Let them know and when that note section, let them know, hey, we're coming in um, early. Uh, you know, so in the morning, so you're paying the extra day. But the thing is, if you got kids, those kind of things, you just want to come and dump your stuff off because we'll. Um, and the thing is, if you're if you can't get until 3 p.m., I'm guessing you're looking at an Airbnb. That's one of the that's one of the really frustrating things about um, apartment rentals and things like that. Like it is like your stuff has to be gone. There's no like, oh, I'll leave my stuff. No, it's it's got to be out. There's there are some services around that will actually hold your bags. Like they'll have locker services and stuff, and you can look it up online um, to try to find some. There might be a locker service in in Madrid at the airport where you can just have a left luggage thing. Because you can just take the the subway back out, the metro back out, and go get your stuff later and come back. Um, but yeah, usually what you end up doing is is booking an extra extra night on the front end. Okay. Uh, let's see. Going through Mary Palace, Falmouth, Jamaica is safe. I haven't been in Falmouth. Jamaica does have some issues, um, but we had a good time when we were there, and we didn't have any issues ourselves. Um, but we 
you know, we hung out with locals. I went to where they said to go and we didn't go to the place we weren't supposed to go. Um, so it's really tough to say because I have not been to Falmo, uh, Falmo. Let's see. Moving on. Oh, heading home from Can Someone's coming in from Cancun today and it just jumped away. I lost it. Um, actually, our, our next round of of shirts is actually dealing with Cancun and Ch uh, Chichen Itza. Uh, so we'll have that shirt out here probably on the website in a week or so. Or not because I have to film. We have to film the uh, hey new shirts coming video. So you have some stuff for that. Um, Raw R, what stands out in your mind about Brazil? The energy. Brazil's got a different kind of energy. The people, everything when you're there, there's like, you're like, want to dance, you want to feel the music, you want to feel the, 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 just everything about it. And I know when you go to Sao Paulo, it's a huge city, but when you're going to other places, you just have this different vibe when you're there. The mentality, the people, it's just a, it's a really cool place to be. I mean, I really enjoy it. Um, when I go, I mean, that's why it's one of my favorite places to go. And I've lived there before and I speak some Portuguese, so it makes it a little bit easier for me to enjoy it. So there is that. So Thomas Reyes, do you have one site you like to use to book airfare? Well, what I'll do is I'll look at different, like I use, I'll look at Kayak, Josh will look at Skyscanner. But then what we end up doing is we go buy the tickets actually from the website of the airline because if something happens, you bought from a third party and Delta or American or EasyJet's like, sorry, you know, you're out of luck. You have to go through them. And, and they're not always super helpful, like with the kayaks and, and these other ones. So I always recommend, especially with hotels, book directly with the hotel company um, because sometimes they actually have better deals um, than actually what you find it online. But also if anything happens, then, hey, I need to leave early or I need to come earlier. They can then adjust the uh, the stuff easier. I know I was going for a conference in Chicago last year and the conference got canceled, but I already got to Chicago and I got to the Hyatt there and I'm like, hey, you know, I was supposed to be here for four nights. Um, they canceled the conference. So can I cancel the other three nights? Because I, I couldn't get back home the next day. And they're like, well, the, the first thing she goes, did you buy the ticket from us? Or did you buy it through like bookings or something like that? And I go, no, I booked direct through you. She's like, okay, good. Then we can do something. Because if you book through bookings and you were past that date, there's nothing we can do because they control all that stuff. So that's why I usually recommend those. Um, but sometimes when the fares are so, so much lower, you're like, man, I'll take the chance that, that I'll lose that with that deal. So that's, that's one of those things you have to think about. Um, Champagne Sumo. I like that name. Is a Euro Rail Pass still a good idea for travelers in Europe? Um, if you're under 26, maybe. If you're over 26, they make you get the first class one. It, it's not, I look at, it's kind of like the Paris Pass or Barcelona Pass or Euro Rail Pass. I look at them all the same way. It's a convenience pass, okay? It's the, I don't have to buy and go wait in line to buy another ticket fee. The thing is, if you're not gonna be traveling enough to make it worthwhile, no, it's not worth it, okay? Um, so really look at it in terms of the prices. If you would just book the tickets yourself, do I really need all that? Because sometimes you're you're using it. Oh, I can just hop up wherever I want, hop in and hop off. Well, you could get that at a lower price by getting the, the Byron ticket or, or a, a, a Brit Rail Pass or something like that. So it really comes down into price now to see if it's worth your while. And that's why I tell people with like the Paris Passes or the Barcelona Passes, see where you're going to go. And if you're okay overpaying just for the fact that you don't have to buy you know more subway passes then hey if it's worth it for you it's worth it for you okay so there is that um oh i just jumped off spectrum i just talked about the corona situation um early on um i'll probably come back to it later because there'll be more questions later so don't worry about that um let's see eric svart i don't Harlem, Utrecht, and Leiden. Yeah, Eric Svart's talking about probably the questions, probably something about good small towns outside of Amsterdam where you can stay. Harlem, Leiden, and Utrecht are great cities to stay outside of Amsterdam. You can stay at a fraction of the price and get way more, uh, and you get tons of Dutch culture when you're there. So it's really, really worth it. Okay, Pedro Huari. Mark, is the round the world ticket worth it? If it's going to the places you want to go, yeah, it is. Um, but we've usually, when we, we haven't gone all the way around. We, we've kind of looked at that. Because we're looking at kind of a Australia, Australia, Southeast Asia, 
and then we're not sure if we're going to go like to Korea and come back to the U.S. or if we're going to keep going from there, then go to Central Asia, to Europe, to home. So it really depends on what your kind of your your itinerary is. It's more one of those like, hey, I've got it, but you know, make sure it's with an airline that you it'll be with you know all the code shares and collect those miles to get the free upgrades and stuff like that. It really that's what, that's one of the things I really recommend when you're doing these things. Um, Joanne. Blake Slee, I'm going to split in Dubrovnik, Croatia in July. I wonder if you've been there. I have. I have not put up, I have a bunch of Croatia videos, but I've not put up my tips on split or Dubrovnik video. That's another one where I actually have, I think I have half the text in for the don'ts of Dubrovnik. I just need to finish putting the rest of it together. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it, they're coming. Um, I actually, split was nice because when you go to split, it's a lot less crowd. Dubrovnik's overrun with tourism. That's one of those over tourism places like Amsterdam and Venice. Dubrovnik just gets slammed by those by the the cruise ships, and they're trying to change it so that not as many cruise ships can come in. Um, but yeah, when it gets when they all when there's two or three ships in, the downtown is packed. But the thing is, everybody goes back to the ship at night, so the nights in Dubrovnik are actually very nice because um, it's not as crowded. Uh, Split, on the other hand, when you go there, you have Dalmatian or Diocletian's palace. You'll go and actually build like the city inside of his palace. You go down in the the, the catacombs underneath. And there's a market down there. It, I I enjoyed Split. I like Split quite a bit. They're both they're both worth visiting. So you'll have a good time when you're when you're there. Let's see. Turn it up, world. Good to see you too this early. <laughs> Tyler, the cool guy. How often do you fly with Delta per year? Um, I well, you mean like trips I took with? I took four trips with Delta last month. Um, I have three trips with them this month. So I fly with them quite often. <sighs> Not that they would have us be on any of their stuff, but whatever. I still like flying with them. Um, let's see. Going through. Oh. Okay, Big Bear 805 SG. Thank you very much for the super chat. Um, what should you do with a 20 plus hour layover? All right. 20 plus hour layover step one get a hotel like even if your bags are going to be stuck in that the airport make sure you have your carry-on that has like if you have meds if you got your contact stuff whatever have that with you have a cup an extra pair of underwear that you can switch into um things like that and then go just go stay at hotels so you can shower freshen up and with 20 hours i mean, I mean if you're flying like europe to australia or australia to us via like hong kong or singapore or something like that there's a lot of stuff you can do in that 20 hour window. I mean, some places are, are actually geared that they have it set up so you can get a lot out of a city in 20 hours. For, so for example, like if you fly with TAP, TAP will let you have like a two or three day layover in in Lisbon, you know, and so you can go see some stuff there. And, and, and you know, um, Iceland Air had a similar thing going through Reykjavik. Um, but I would say definitely get a place to stay just so you have a place to like get a real nap in, get a real sleep in. Because with 20 hours, you are going to, that is an overnight somehow, okay? That's one thing I would look at. Um, doo -doo -doo. <laughs> hey, Zen, thanks for popping in. <laughs> See, I tried to get this early enough so I could get some people to, to stay awake or before they went to bed. Um, let's see. Oh, Eve Miguel, can you see the Greek Isles in December? You can, but getting to them becomes a lot more complicated because they don't have anywhere near the number of flights. Some don't have any flights. I mean, it's just the occasional ferries going, so you're, you're doing that. Um, I know I, we went to Santorini in February, and it was my mom, my dad, and I, and some donkeys. There was no tourists there. There was nobody there. Very, like, we were, I mean, it was cool because we had to go search for restaurants, and that's where all the locals were eating. So we got to have a really Greek experience when we were there, which is not typical when you go to Santorini. Um, and so it was hard to find places to eat and things like that. So do have a heads up. If you're going to go to a, one of the Greek islands in December, I would probably go for like Crete because you have Heraklion and Anya, which are actually you know pretty major sized cities. So they have stuff going on all year round because there's the own people, not just the tourism people that are really doing those things. The real Will Davis. Hey, Mark was in 15 countries last year. Cool. This year heading to 10 plus countries in Eastern Europe. Any advice? Um, be ready for a lot of pork and beer. Um, cause there's a lot of pork and beer in Eastern Europe, uh, cabbage too. 
Um, I would say if you get a chance, it depends how you define Eastern Europe. If you're going like the Iron Curtain thing. There, I mean, you can always do the, you know, the, the Prague, Bratislava, Budapest, which is more of Central Europe now, which is Central Europe. Um, but some people can still consider that Eastern Europe. You have that. Um, going over, if you're looking at the Baltics, the Baltics can be pretty interesting if you're going in the summertime. I do not recommend going in the winter. But in the summer, you know, Tallinn is fantastic. Well, Tallinn is great any time of year. And Riga can be fun any time of year. But Tallinn, Riga, Vilnius, they're all really nice to check out. Um, if you go, if you want, like, kind of a crazy thing, you can see Belarus. Uh, but getting the visas for there can sometimes be complicated. Um, or you could go down, if you did like Bulgaria, Romania, that can be, and on the Black Sea, that can be kind of a cool trip as well. Uh, so you have a lot of options when you're out there. I would try to do, like, if you're going to do like a Baltic trip, do like, you know, Baltics in like Belarus or Baltics and maybe hit up, you know, St. Petersburg or something like that. Uh, and then do like a, a Southeast Europe kind of, you know, Bulgaria, Romania, uh, Moldova kind of thing. You could do that. So hope that helps. Ray Kelly, what cruise line do you like best? I do not do cruises. Um, I've been on a few, and I just I don't have any specific ones. Um, there's oh, what's his name, Gary Bembridge on Twitter. Uh, he's not the cruise critic. What is his? I'm, I'll look him up real quick. Um, he does all kinds of reviews for um, cruises. Gary Bembridge. Gary Bembridge. This guy. I don't know if you can see it. Gary Bembridge, I like him where he talks about um, cruises and cruise lines. And cruise lines have him come and check out his cruises all the time. And so he's got tons and tons of stuff. So check him out for any cruise information. I mean, I could tell you my, my tips on cruising, but he's got so much stuff. I think you'd be better off asking him. Because he actually ranks cruises and all kinds of stuff. So there is that. Hey, Mark Finley, good to see you, buddy. We're in San Antonio at a music convention, about to get rolling for the day, but just want to pop in and say, hey, Terry's rocking her Waldo's World quarter zip. Thanks, Terry. Y'all have fun in San Antonio. Russ Rose, hey, thanks to Super Chat, man. Um, how long is your time to get from international terminal to domestic or others in custom at LAX? I have little, little over two hours for mine. Uh, you can do it. What I would say, this is a mistake I see people make right away is they get off the plane and they go straight to the bathroom. And even if you're in the front of the plane, your entire rest of your plane gets in front of you. So when you know, let's say you're supposed to land at noon and you know, half hour before landing, that's when they start doing the descent, right? Use the bathroom, get all freshened up, everything ready before you, like before the, the plane starts to descend to go to the airport to land. Cause then you don't have to go to the bathroom right when you get off the plane, you can just get off the plane and just go. And then you can be focused getting to, um, passport control and stuff like that. I mean, two hours, you should be okay. Um, so, so there is that, but make sure you got it ready so you can, you know, do the little thing and they take your picture and, and, uh, go get your bags and recheck your bags. Cause you'll, cause you'll go through passport control. And then once you go through there, they have to pick up your bags and when you get your bags, then you have to redrop it off in the bag drop. And then you have to go through security again. And then that, so that's why it's, it, it gets really, uh, like don't, don't dilly dally. Okay, that, that would be my best advice. Um, David Allen, hi Mark, going to Budapest in June. How much is the daily spend for two people in English pounds? Um, it's a lot less than going out in London, I can tell you that. If like, I would think it's more like going out in Bath. So instead of like a, a 15 pound meal, it's like a 10 pound meal kind of stuff. And you can eat and drink really well. Then there's a lot of places actually a lot cheaper uh, to go to when you're there. So I would say, you know, figure I mean, eating well, 10 pounds for lunch, 15 pounds for dinner will be like, you'll explode from all the food if you're going to like the middle, middle of the road kind of places. Uh, so there is that. Yeah, tips for travelers, fuzzy lawn, you're right. Um, what else? Um, Mark Solis, are you planning on doing any videos from Cleveland or Akron? There's actually quite a lot of attraction to in Northern Ohio, excluding Cedar Point. I would never exclude Cedar Point. <laughs> um, actually, it's depending on what um, where plans are for in the middle of the summer this year. Because I don't know if Caleb, like, because Caleb likes to do like soccer camps and other kind of camps. So it depends on what camp he does. Because there's one camp, if he does do, we might drive out to like the East Coast and on the way pass through Cleveland. Because I also want to go stay in the... Uh, the Christmas Story House, because I'm kind of a fan. Because if you look at our 
front thing. We have the leg lamp in our front window. Um, so I wouldn't mind going there to check out their stuff um, on the way. So there is that. Um, Big Barito 5 SG, I have no idea. With, I've never seen storefair.com, so I can't really say anything about it. Um, but I'll, I'll check it out. Thank you again for the super chat. Um, but I do not, I have not seen those, so I'll have to look for that one. I'm glad that the videos helped, and I appreciate it. Uh, Eric Svar, visiting the Hearts Mountains for the second time next week. Any tips besides the towns you talk about in your video for Hearts videos? Been to Broken Mountain already, or maybe something to do in the three towns? Um, we do have, yeah, we do already have the videos on that. I think I have one more. Do I have a Five Love and Hates of Hearts Mountains? I filmed one. I'm not sure if I put it out. That's the thing. I, I film so many videos, sometimes I lose track of what I have and don't have. Um, for those who don't know, the Hartz Mountains is an interesting place in Germany because it was where East and West Germany kind of came, where, where the border was. And it's these fantastic small towns up in these mountains, and it's gorgeous. Great Christmas time, any time of the year. They're like fairy tale looking towns, and it's interesting to see the difference because you have Gosler, which is a town that was in West Germany, and then you have like Venegoda and Quellenberg, which was in East Germany, and you really see like, you, well, now it's less and less, but you can really see the difference of how the cities changed after the war. Um, but it's just, they're really cool cities to go to. So, uh, Eric, you have a good time, man. Um, Claire, hey, Mark, do you have any recommendations for the Scottish Highlands? I'm staying at the Castle of May this coming summer. That's really cool. I was going to say, make sure you're already booked because Highlands in the summer, all that stuff books out way in advance. Make sure you're reserving every dinner now. Like, find the pubs you're going to have dinner in and, and book in because there's so few and far between that the tourists that are there, they take up the spots. So you don't want to be eating out of, you know, you tens for dinner every single day because there's some good foods up there. Um, also, uh, download the offline maps like maps.me um, because the GPS will always work, but your 4G signal might not always work. So have a heads up in there. Uh, to do, let's see. So Bubba Spartan, hello from Oklahoma, going to Greece in September. First question we have, hour and a half layover in our hair. Is that enough time and how hard is it to get through? Okay, so it depends which terminal you're going through. Like Bubba, comment what airline you're flying with, like from where to where to Greece. Because if you're going like United from the US into United Europe going to Frankfurt, you're gonna you're not gonna have to go to the international terminal. So you'll still be behind um you'll still be behind uh, security because going back to the security is what takes time. You don't want to go out. So if you're going from terminal two to three, do the walk, don't do the bus. Okay. But if you're going to five, you have to take the, you have to take the, the, the shuttle, which adds some time. Okay. Um, Francis, I have never been to Denver, so I can't really give you anything on that. I'm sorry. Michael Mann, my, my buddy. Thank you very much for the super chat, my friend. Hi, I don't really have a question. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Just a bit of support for the great work and that you and Jocelyn do. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. I know Jocelyn does too. And she's laying upstairs right now, upstairs in bed in a lot of pain because her tummy is not liking her right now. So there is that. Uh, th but thanks, Michael. I, the super chats do mean a lot. And, I, and, I, and the thing is, it, for all of you, even if you don't super chat, your comments, your support, your likes, you know, click that like button, maybe joining as being a member uh, for because we actually do these live feeds for once a month for our members where it is really much more in depth on these topics because we really will go into like you know Christine's asking about the Cliffs of Moore and worth it for from Dublin yes it is worth it and we will go like for ten minutes into these things whereas here we have so many questions like just just hi how are you and Andrew good to see you um, it's hard to really focus for a long time because I got more questions to do. Whereas that one, we have the time to really go into it. So if you are interested in becoming a member, you can click the join button down there and we have other videos we put out and stuff like that. Um, so so there is that. And you get those little cool badges. Um, other stuff. Um, Bassino 49. Where is some good places to go in Belgium besides the most popular places like Brussels, Ghent, Bruges? Already been to those. Uh, the Ardennes can be kind of interesting. Antwerp's a nice, nice big city to check out. Um, that would be the two ones I'd say right off the top of my head. But going back to Mino Christine, is a day trip to Clitzelmoor worth it from Dublin? So it's a long day trip. So you might want to go to like Galway and spend the night and then do it from there. Um, but it is doable because Ireland is not that big. So it's, I mean, you're just going to be driving a lot. Um, you could stop on Kilkenny on the way over or Galway on the way there going down. So there are some things you can do. So... 
So the real world Dave is, is $1,500 a month budget, budget for a month for a single cheap guy in Eastern Europe. Oh yeah, that's that's doable. Cheap airlines going around. You'll probably take trains in Eastern Europe. So yeah, you should be okay with that. I mean, I could make that work, no problem. So, um, hey Louise, good to see you, buddy. Let's see, Francis, thank you very much for the super chat. If it's okay, love you guys. Hope Jocelyn feels better. Thank you, Francis. I appreciate it, and she appreciates it. And uh, yes, yeah, because the last two nights, the poor girl has not been able to sleep more than like two or three hours before she has to go for a run, let's say. So uh, glad she's, hopefully, because she, she was doing better, and then it kind of like came back and got her. Ooh. Okay, Gabriella Carolina, we're moving to Denmark from the from DC soon. Any tips on moving to Europe? Okay, all this like, are you going for like a long term three year kind of thing or what? Because what we had when uh, we moved Jocelyn and everything out to Portugal to be with me, we actually put all of our stuff in storage and we because in Europe you have a lot more apartments that you rent that are already furnished. So everything was furnished. We didn't need to take any furniture. Didn't need to take any of that stuff. So we just had some suitcases and went. And what you have to realize is you, you don't need to take all your clothes. I mean, take some of your favorite kind of stuff. And you're going to buy clothes when you're there so you fit in more. Um, because that's one of the ways you can really, you know, tell tours is just by the way they dress. Like, I'm not wearing my, my Walter's World, you know, I'm not wearing my hoodie <laughs> when I'm traveling. This is, this is, oh, I'm around the house relaxing kind of stuff. Um, whereas there you'd have different kind of clothes. So do that. Another thing I'd look at if you're going, if you're moving there, uh, is do both people have permission to work? Because that's one thing I saw. Because when Jocelyn came to Portugal, I had work permission there because I was doing my PhD and I was teaching. But it took her a year to get her, it took, actually, it took 13 months to get her first year long official visa before she could work. But by that time, you know, it was, it was tough to find work. And so it, that's one of those things you do see. I actually have an older video, like things to consider before, 10 things to consider before you move abroad. Also, I have a video of five things to love and hate about moving abroad and, and, and actual the living abroad. They're older videos, but the topics in there I think are really important for you to have a conversation with your whole family about these things. So you can kind of do that. Um, electronics and stuff like that, you just buy new ones there. Um, maybe your laptops should take those things, but like your TVs and your, your if you do your DVDs or whatever, like those things aren't going to work there anyway. So you're going to have to restart up. So it is... It's like when you're it's thinking about it when you're like left home for the first time, you had to get a lot of your own stuff. So just just have a heads up for that. Um, but it is really a great experience. Um, we did love living abroad. I mean, Jocelyn's commenting on there now. Gabriella, moving abroad is great and crazy biggest. There is less space for everything. Yes, a lot less space. Um, your typical DC, you know, Nova house those people that you know the not the you know like the four bedroom houses now are into like a three bedroom apartment kind of stuff so do have a heads up for that but you will be outside a lot more you'll be biking a lot more and stuff like that in denmark um don't get too upset with the danes if they're not talking to you because danes don't really talk to a lot of people they're like they mind their own business so don't think they don't like you it's just that they're just hey uh we'll be okay uh so just have a heads up for that um so Tyler Cool Guy 88, this we're going back to is booking a third party such as Expedia, Kayak, Orbitz, etc. Only beneficial if your trip is on two or more airlines. Example, flying out of United and flying back on Delta. Okay, so with those, I mean that is helpful that when they have their their hacker fares and stuff like that. Um, Expedia is also good if you buy if you want to get like first class tickets, you can actually get significantly discounted first class tickets if you buy the ticket and get like one night in a hotel somewhere. Even if you don't use that hotel, it can actually give you like first class tickets for half price. Um, you don't get all the, some, I don't know if you get all the benefits and miles that like you usually do when you buy first class direct uh, from an airline. But um, I have a buddy of mine who swears by Expedia and he does first class all the time. And he's like, oh, I rented this hotel. We're not even gonna use it. But just cause it, that got me, you know, $2,000 off each of these first class tickets. So that's one of those things that, that can really help out by using those booking sites. Um, and one thing I would say is a lot of people, when they do those like hacker fares where it's, you're flying United and then Delta, then Alitalia or whatever, what you have to realize is if you're taking luggage with you, you're gonna have to go get your luggage, recheck it in every single time and, and check in for each one of those legs separate. Uh, so do have a heads up for that. But if you're doing like a carry-on, it's not too much of an issue. 
but let's say you fly United and your next flight's with Delta and United is late. Delta's like, look, you were here for our Delta flight. The United, what happened with United is not our problem. So that's where, where issues can come about. So that's why I always say, like, you know, be careful. Um, okay, so Gabriella, minimum two years. You'll, you'll have a good time, plenty of time to integrate there. Um, what I would look for is look for, um, when you're this is going back to going to Denmark, there's always going to be, like, Americans in Denmark or, or foreigners in Portugal or whatever. So there's groups to get to know people. Because that's one of those things, no matter where you move to in the world, it's hard to meet people. Like, when you've got little kids, it's easier because they have school, so you can meet people through school. But if you're, you know, if you don't have, or the kids are really little, sometimes it's hard to meet people when you go. So try to find those groups and, and be open to meeting them and stuff like that. That can be really helpful. Eric Zvart, have you ever used Google Flights? I have looked at it, but I, I've not really used it. Some people really swear by it. I'm still okay with the other things I do. Um, and Google lately, I feel like all like on search is just like the first page is just paid ads. Even if it's not paid, it doesn't say ads. It's obvious that these people have paid. It seems like to be you know higher on search engines results, and it's not giving you good answers and good help. I mean, I'm actually on a few um, groups on Facebook and, and and Twitter and all kinds of stuff, and we'll actually you know we'll comment like. You know, we used to be on page one of Google. Now we're page three, and the first two pages is basically, you know, airlines and and travel agencies that aren't actually giving helpful advice. They're just trying to sell their products versus like what people are really searching for. So that's one thing is when you're searching your results, you're looking for stuff for different travel destinations. Don't just do the first page. Maybe click a couple pages in to see if you can find some other things on there because Google search has kind of changed um, recently. So have a heads up for that. A Silver is, hey, good to see you. Hope you're doing well in California, VK. Oh, I love you, buddy. VK in Germany, good to see you there. Um, always nice. To do. Let's see. All right, so, all right, okay, so Kyle Frank, are eight days enough to visit Copenhagen, Oslo, Stockholm in one trip over the 4th of July weekend? Would you recommend trains or planes between Scandinavian countries? Uh, you can just take the trains between there. Um, Stockholm, Oslo, you can you can stop over in Gothenburg on the way. There's a train Denmark uh, from Copenhagen up to Stockholm. So if you did your flights, you could actually like fly into Oslo, then go like Gothenburg to Stockholm, then a train down to, to Copenhagen and fly out that way. So it is definitely doable. Okay. Um, <laughs> Martin Brown. Hi, Mark. I love your videos. Thank you. I appreciate it. If you could choose anywhere to spend New Year's Eve, where would you go? I've done New York and live in London. So for cool places I've done New Year's, I've done Prague, I've done Berlin, I've done London, I've done Salisbury actually as well in England. Um, where else have we done it? I have to look at my, my list because we usually travel. Oh, Savannah, we were in Savannah this year. We've done uh, Costa Rica, we've done, where else? We've done France, okay. where? Yeah, Berlin, we did that. We're, uh, we've done Italy. Uh, we've done that. So we've done a lot of different places. I'd like to go to Paris. Jocelyn will, Jocelyn's weekly over here. Uh, but she's still, look how fantastic she looks being Good sick. Morning. Yeah, so. Um, but she would like to do Paris for, for New Year's. We can look into that. That's fine. Uh, so we have a lot of different places. I would like to do like Rio or something like where it's for New Year's. Everyone dresses in white and goes into the ocean. Like that's kind of a cool thing. Uh, uh, yeah, Justin's up for that too. Uh, next up, Mark, trying to buy your black travel t-shirt. I only see the blue one on your shop site. We only have the blue one right now because um, we have because a lot of it's a logistics kind of thing because you have to have a certain number of products that are always up there. Like there's uh, inventory you have to have for you to be have a Shopify account. We do not have the black one right now. The only black thing we have up is um, our quarter zip uh, right now. Um, and the next T-shirt that's coming out that's based on Chichen Itza is actually a red shirt with black, blackish gray lettering. So I do not have a black one right now. Sorry, buddy. Um, let's see. Francis, as a bigger traveler like me, I would like to know what, if anything, you do to strike up conversation and friendships. Some people don't approach me, and I wonder if you had any tips. Morning, Liam. Um, so, yeah, being a bigger traveler, um, especially in Europe, you, there's a lot of fat shaming. Um, 
There's a lot of there's a lot of that. Um, I, I found in Asia it was a lot easier to get people to talk to you because I would have people that would want to rub my belly for good luck. Like when I was in Beijing, I mean every day someone like let's take a picture and you could see they do the picture but they look down at my belly and like it's okay and so then they're like and so they get the pictures of rubbing my belly while while they're doing the the, the you know the peace thing. Um, and it's kind of funny because you'll see that. Um, just what I saw is like you know uh, it's amazing just a smiley face and a positive attitude goes a long way. Oh, you're going to just join us. With you for a minute. Do we so, have our new t-shirts? Yes, we do have, but they're not up online, so I don't want to. We don't have them Can up we online. give our fans a hint? Uh, I think they're in the car. Well, if you'd like to chat for a bit, while I go find them. Go find them. Then try not to. Be good luck, baby. Okay, I'm fine. I'm gonna take this little cushion now, cause. Good morning. How are you? I look pretty. <laughs> um, I don't know what Mark was discussing. Well, I think he was discussing a bigger guy and making friends. Um, sometimes, I'm going to be honest, I think that people are less intimidated by Mark um, simply because he is big and gregarious, and I think that it works out just fine. Um, da, da, da. James Land, Mark, we are excited about our upcoming trip to Europe in April and May, and we have one week planned for London. Should we go somewhere besides London while in the UK? Absolutely. Um, Nothing is very far away when you're in the UK by American standards. I would go down to um, Bath, probably. Um, I think Bath is just such a lovely place. Um, I would definitely go down and check that out. So, um, yeah, you can definitely see more stuff if you've got that amount of time. Um, thanks, Mark. I lived in Salisbury for three years, most in the Air Force. It's definitely more authentic English than London today. I would agree with that. I think that London is so international right now that um, sometimes you don't feel, you don't get the real English feel there. Um, <clears throat> Sonia Nunez, when is the most economic time of year to travel to Germany and Greece? So Greece is almost never economic as far as the flights go. God, I really look terrible. Um, <laughs> Chicharitza. Not chicken pizza. <laughs> what do you think? This is my next, my new design. In, um, that's her drawing. That's my drawing. Um, I think it's fun. I want to finish answering this question. Well, keep answering the question. Okay. Um, They'll be on the site probably this week. Yeah, so my silly shirt. But these are really soft and thin and yummy. So the women's They're has the great. v-neck. The, guy, the unisec has the normal. Yes, because mama here likes v-neck. Um, so Greece is often really expensive to get to, um, so to make that less expensive, no matter when you're going, Easter is probably, Easter and Christmas are probably the most expensive times to fly to Greece. The, the cheapest, if there is a cheapest, is probably um, September-ish, and I like to go in September anyway because the weather's nice, there's hardly any tourists from anywhere else, and the figs are in season, and the figs are glorious. One thing I would give advice for saving money going to Greece is fly into like somewhere, you know, else. somewhere else and then do like an easy jet or something like that getting into Greece because like we that were looking we were looking to go there this summer and when I was looking to fly into Greece it was like two thousand dollars but then I, we flew into Switzerland instead and it was you know twelve hundred and I have a flight down to Greece for fifty bucks so I'm like wow twelve fifty versus two thousand and you got a family it, it really it's will a add huge up huge difference um I you you look really thin. Lost a lot of weight. Thanks, baby. Of course, after last night, I'm not as thin as I was. We uh, <laughs> we had Palentine's Day at our friend's house, and and so I'm I'm only eating red meat once a week, and so yesterday was my red meat day and <laughs> wine so and my and my wine day, and I'm like, okay. Oh, okay. Um, the real Will Davis on my journey to reach a hundred countries. I was in 15 countries last year, and at least 10 this year. Europe and Asia already completed. Um, where would you suggest next? Okay, so if you want to get a ton of countries really fast, um, and if that's like your goal, um, and I know that that's that seems like your thing. So um, a, a Caribbean cruise. There are there are cruises around the Caribbean, or Caribbean, however you say it, um, that you can just go to like. 10 or 12 countries in, in like 10, 12 days. I mean, they're really, it's really fast. 
Um, Central America is another place where you can land yourself in one place and just take buses um, through each of the others and do it because it's a relatively small area. You can get you can get to a lot of places relatively quickly. Oh dear Lord, thank you. Hey, do me a favor. Click the like button down below so uh, just we have some more likes. Um, um, Constance is asking um, what. I consider my favorite city in the U.S. Definitely Savannah. Yeah, I was going to say Savannah. Without yeah. reservation. I love Savannah. That's where my home is. That's where my heart is anyway. Um, For me, there's a few I really enjoy, but I like... I, I end up going to New Orleans a ton. Um, not for Bourbon Street, but just for the architecture and the food and stuff like that. Really enjoy, I, enjoy, I really enjoy going to Savannah. Um, I really love San Diego. Like, I was surprised how much I really enjoyed San Diego. I mean, people were cool. Food was good. I mean, it's San Diego. It's always like, you know, 75 and sunny. So it was really kind of a cool experience. Okay. You want me to go next? or No, Michael's um, question. Um, as an introvert, hi, Michael. Good morning. Um, as an introvert, I find it a bit difficult to feel engaged in a place rather than just an observer. I have no issues moving around well and confidently. Any tips to enhance the travel experience? Michael, as an introvert, you're just gonna have to you're just gonna have to stop and speak to somebody who looks friendly. Um and it may just it what may help is um I don't know, we're both so extroverted. Um I'm less so than Mark is, but we'll do right now. um <laughs> I think. Um you know, it may just be your your server at a restaurant or or something that you know you start to talk to, and and getting a small conversation will give you the confidence to create a conversation with someone else. But I think the people that we make connections with first, it's always taxi drivers. Yeah, taxi drivers. I get in such a long conversation with taxi drivers mm -hmm. now, and it's not like the Uber crazy kind of like, hey, it's just like you know we talk, 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 get a lot of information. No bother. Um, I think one of the things, Michael, that could help is going off the talking to the waiter kind of stuff. If you're staying someplace for a while and you find a restaurant you enjoy and you go back a couple times, they, they recognize you. And then for them, it's like, wait, I, there's, I can develop a relationship, too, for the waiter. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they'd like to have a relationship with their clients as well because it's yep. boring just bringing food out all the time. Uh, so that would be one thing to kind of look at. I mean, I've actually done it where I, I'll, like, walk by the restaurant and, like, ask them some questions about the stuff. Hey, well, I hope I'll come by later. And then when I come by later, they, they're like, oh, I remember you. And then it kind of, like, helps to start the, the conversation out. Um, so Carlos asks, hey, guys, any idea when the podcast is happening? Um, so for those who don't know, we're looking at putting together a podcast and where it's going to be more like we will do, you know, a 30 to 45 minute podcast just on visiting France or just on visiting Italy or just about traveling with your kids and it'll be just specifically focused on one topic or maybe two topics um because we have the, we have a lot of videos that are that are out there but a lot of people like lose them or, or they're not finding them online because Google and YouTube make it hard to find this way we could have like a podcast series so people could get a lot more information more focused information on there um we might have some interviews and stuff like that in there but it's gonna be mostly like no you can listen to this like on your way to work, I can listen to the podcast and get me ready to go to Morocco because somebody was asking about going to Morocco and things like that. Like, can I do it myself or can I do it? Should I do it with a group, group, group kind of thing? We did it by ourselves. It's definitely doable. Morocco's got a pretty decent tourism infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, so you could do it by yourself with your friend, um, especially since you have a friend you're going together. Um, if you're going to places like Fez and you're going to Marrakesh and stuff like that, you should be okay. Just watch things when you're in the when you're in the markets and stuff like that. Um, there's two questions I want to answer. I'm not sure if you already answered Carlos's. Um, he's well, going I've, to yeah, Italy. Did I've, you answer? I know. That? I only answered his podcast one. I'm going to get into the other one. So. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to Italy, arriving in Milan for three days, then Bolzano uh, for three, and Venice for three. Should I rent a car, or travel by train? Absolutely, do train. Do the train because what'll happen is you'll take the train from Milan to Verona, and then that's where you're going to switch, and then it goes up to Bolzano. Um, I've done that or multiple times uh, going up that way because it's like a T. Um, so like the tip of the T is Bolzano and then one side's Milan, the other side is, is Venice. Venice. So it's, it's easy enough to do. I've done it multiple times. Yeah, we've so. done it a lot. 
Okay. And you and the thing is, is, if you pay the extra for the fast train, I don't know if it's super worth it because since you're just going to Verona, it's like you're gonna pay double for getting there only like a few minutes faster. So that might be something to look into. Um, the trains I think were every other hour up to Bolzano from Verona. Um, so just give you a heads up for that. So hope that helps. All right, next, um, OG, how is El Salvador? See this face. She didn't help. The water got her. We had a nice time, though. I mean, I can see why people is, go there to I surf. Parasite. Yeah. I think I'm dying. Oh, you're not that bad. <clears throat> I'm so not dying. The papusas, we have a video of eating papusas. The, they're like. Pupusas. Pupu, sorry, pupusas. They're phenomenal. It's like two tortillas with uh, filling in the middle. I mean, some people, it's like a quesadilla, but it's not like a quesadilla. And their with tortillas rice flours. are thick, like a pita almost. Yeah. Not... And it's, well, it's either made with cornmeal or rice meal flour. The rice ones. Which is the, great if yeah. you're gluten free. Yeah, and so those were amazing. Like, those were amazing. They were really good. And then we went to a few Mayan sites, and you can tell El Salvador has no, has no tourism because the tour of infrastructure there is zilch. There's none. I mean, finding guides. I mean, your, your guide is more is just a driver. Okay, like, I'll tell you right now, it's really hard to find guide guides. It's mostly just drivers that take you around, and they're nice. I mean, the people are really nice. And they tell you stuff. I mean, they're locals, so they teach you, you know, things about, but they're not, like, um, that's not their first and foremost job right yeah but anyway it was i liked it i, I mean the people yeah. were cool the food was great it's a beautiful country yeah um like incredible beaches the black sand beaches were just beautiful um be careful the rip sides there though man the, yeah. it's huge for a surf in may they have the world surf competition there and i mean we were in the ocean you could feel my god caleb was like no dude don't go out that far man you gotta be careful because mm -hmm. even like the locals were like yeah i'd wait till about three or four to go out to the beach man like, oh, we're just going to walk along the sand. They're like, yeah, you know, just just wait. Yeah. So you got to be careful some All right, of those things. So the next one I want to answer is Bubba Spartans. He says, hello, Lady Jocelyn. Second great question. Is it okay to bring home certain souvenirs like Greek honey or olive oil, a.k.a. lavi, since they are liquid? Or should I mail a box home uh, mid-15-day trips? So um, my family has done both. Generally speaking, um, we just take stuff home. We actually, my dad always jokes that when we come through um, security, we smell like a rolling Greek salad because <laughs> we we bring home like dried chamomile. Um, we we bring home dried Greek oregano is like the greatest thing on earth. I just it's the best oregano I've ever I've ever tasted. Um, so we bring home a lot of, of spices and things like that. And then um, I have brought home honey which you need to like put in a Ziploc bag, wrap up in socks and underwear, put in another Ziploc bag. Like that is not Because it breaks, something. it's gonna be bad. And if you can put it in a plastic container, that's best. I have never brought home lavi, the oil. Um, but we have people that have, and you can, you, you can. It has to go in your checked bag. Yeah, you will not be able to take it on your um, carry-on. And so you're limited to what, two, Two liter bottles, two one liter bottles. I don't know what that's alcohol. I don't know what it is oh. for a lot of these. Um, so there's that. Um, I know that Morning, there man. there are certain things that you're not supposed to bring home, like you know the um the sausages packed in oil. Those are those are like I think meat, illegal. Yeah, meat right? pro meat products are no nos, and is it fruit all no? pro meat, meat. Yeah, meat products and fruit products are usually usually no nos. Don't worry, the dogs will, will, will find it when, when you fly in. <laughs> and Don't it worry. won't be in your suitcase when you get your yeah, suitcase. Yeah, you'll get that little thing from TSA. Mm -hmm. And that says, we checked your bag. Um, so you can mail home um, a, a box. Know that shipping from Greece is extraordinarily slow. I mean, you, if, if your name is Bubba Spartan and you're going to Greece, I'm going to guess that you are of Greek descent. So you understand what Greek time is. And <laughs> the Greek mail, God bless them, is... Um, also not particularly fast. Yeah. So be aware that it might take a long time. And I would definitely ensure it um, just because it's a long trip for stuff to make. Yeah. Um, and by the way, are you are you actually Spartan? Because my family's, um, is, or my yaya's side is from Sparta. So. so a few highs. Darian, our buddy, good to see you up here morning, this morning. Darian. Jamie, good to see you. Um, Jamie was asking the best time to go to Italy. I would say September because... September, early October, because you still have nice weather and all everybody's back in school, so the sites are a lot less busy. You have a lot more free time. Restaurants are still open. 
you can go eat and enjoy and not have to worry about the tourist hordes. I mean, there'll still be tourist hordes, but not the hordes won't be as big. It'll be small hordes, you know, on the weekends. So during the week, it's like you. So that would be my, my best there. Jorge Carrasco, thank you. Good luck. I'm glad you like what we do, man. That means a lot. Lynn, good morning. Um, let's see. Did you see that question from Martin Brown? What would we put in an app? He says, have you considered well, an app? No, we didn't consider an app for we a travel, for, like entertainment kind of thing. For for fun stuff for the kids and like yeah games, which I I'm still I would do that. I have no idea. Because I think I think what the I think if we did do an app, it would be more of a so you can go and find information, and we would have like basic fact kind of stuff like top ten foods, so you can just kind of look right there and like click and see. And go, okay, am I having these things? And I'm there. We probably put in some of the, uh, some of the uh, like top ten words and stuff like that. So what were you laughing at? Um, somebody said, um, "Good, good did, did, Morgan from uh, Bremen." Oh, good Morgan. But Bremen, Moin from Bremen, Moin. yeah. So Stefan Boucher, Moin from Bremen. So Bremen, I went there quite a few times back in the day. <laughs> I, I, the, your your Strassenbahns always try to kill me, so I, I feel <laughs> if I go back there, I will die because they will kill me. <laughs> Um, I know I want to see the Bremen Stop Music Content again, but they always try to get me. They always try to get me. Um, um, so Chandler Bing. Hey, Walter. Chandler Bing. Uh, I, hey, I've Chandler. Been, I've been watching your videos for very early, early next month. Thanks for the awesome tips and advice. I'm, I'm glad we can help out. And I'm really glad we can help out all of you traveling. It's really nice to know that we can it's cool really help out. It's part of that for you. Yeah. Thank you, Monique, for all the uh, thumbs up. I appreciate it. Um, Rose, I think you can take food on a domestic flight in the U.S. You I brought can. king cake from New Orleans back to New York City. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you can take food to other countries. There just might be limitations. Um, and actually, certain states have limitations, like uh, Florida. You can't take certain kinds of things in. And it has to do with um, not with invasive you know, non-native plants and things like that. Yeah, that's so it's, it's the seeds they don't some want. Kind of something like that, but you'll know ahead of time, and you just have to leave it. Um, Lynn Novak, thank you very much for the super chat. I'm glad you Lynn. love our channel. We'll keep making great content. Try to help out, help out other travels, these live feeds and other kind of stuff. Hopefully, the podcasts are coming and our fun stuff. So, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, let's see what next question. Spectrum Art Mati. Have a week in Lebanon next for, for next month, but now have concerns, especially since we're traveling with children. Thoughts? So anytime we travel, we always look and see, like, oh, do we feel comfortable? Do we not feel comfortable going to a certain place? And, and the thing is, is realize the news will always give you the worst case scenario because scared people watch the news and they don't, they just sit there and want to watch more because they're so worried. I would look up more specific information from the State Department or you know the Foreign Office or whatever and see what they're saying. Contact the people um, where you're staying and ask what it's like for boots on the ground. I mean, they know better than, than anybody else, and there are people living there. So talk to them, you know, whether you have guides set up or just your hotel, and see, see what their opinion is. So, Creighton, I'm glad that our videos are nice. Thanks. I appreciate it. And, Christine, I'm glad you like Jocelyn's short hair. Just say thank oh, you. Oh, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Y'all, um, I'm not very with it yet. Yeah. Thanks, Christine. Oh, I mean like a Walter's World trip advisor for destinations. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. kind of how we would probably have it set up. So, Tim Gmail2, thanks for your videos. You're welcome. We're heading in June to split Croatia and Athens to reach each for five nights. Any recommendations for specific excursions or island trips from either already planned Okay, going to Plovich. Yeah, okay. So when you're in Split, you'll be able to do a ton of different stuff. Um, you might go down to Havar or some of the smaller islands out there. There's tons of options. I mean, I I have Split Croatia, Walter's World. I think I have a bunch of a bunch of little things on there. And actually, I did a cruise with Quasi Cruise a couple of years ago, um, just in that area, just in the Dalmatian coast. And I kind of go through some of the islands that are on there, and so that can give you some of the ideas of places you can get to relatively easily from split so you have tons of options athens i would definitely do a day trip to Nauplio, the former capital that's a cool thing to do you can also go to delphi or delphi and see that um so yeah Nauplio would be my first my first because it's just a quaint beautiful place mm -hmm. um and it's very different from athens athens is a city and it is it's a big thing, but it takes a, a couple days to get all the stuff that's in Athens, you know, to, to really 
see all of that. So I would say definitely do that. So Creighton asked, did you ever visit China before the virus? Yes. yes. We, I taught in China um, one summer, I think it was 2013, 2014. Somewhere around 14. there. I taught in Beijing and we traveled around. I had a really nice time. Um, we got to see some Six really... Six years ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. But it was a, it was a cool 14. experience. Um, um, it was, and it was bye, overwhelming. Stefan. It was crazy. Um, let's yeah. see. Oh, Bubba Spartan. He, yeah, he's part Greek, too. Oh, I see that. Oh, Laconia and Peloponnese. They have my Papoose families. So, Javon Vidal. So, when are you coming back to Jamaica? If it was up to Caleb, we'd be on a flight to Jamaica right now. Uh, we will get back there. That's definitely because we like to go to new places, but we always like to return back to places we really enjoy. And Jamaica is definitely on our definitely return list, so we will be going. We will be back. Lynn, enjoy your company. Good luck getting ready for him. Um, let's see, uh, Missy Scanlon must see in Costa Rica. You want to do the cloud forest? You're going up to Arnal. We have a video on Arnal that'll give you some ideas. But you're going up there. That's where you're doing your zip lining and stuff like that. Also, you can go down by Manuel Antonio National Park. There's tons of national parks and coasts really and stuff like that. that. Part too. Yeah, yeah, I mean you have you have the super touristy places like Hako, which you can go to, which I mean you can learn how to surf and have a nice time there too. Um, the capital, I don't really need to stay too much time in the capital there, um, except to fly in and out of. But you could fly in and out of, of um, Liberia in the north. Um, there's a lot of places up there, so there are some some options. J Rock's on here. Good morning. How are oh, you? Oh, Jason, <laughs> Ryan, oh, yeah, yeah. Midwest Bat. Company, yeah, Midwest Bat. If anybody out there are baseball people, you should check them out. Really look up Midwest Bat. So, Jason, we have not <laughs> been to Istanbul, uh, but that is one of the options we have for this summer. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple. We have about a week long window uh, that we're not already scheduled for stuff, and we're already over there. So, we're trying to think about what we're going to do. If we're going to do Istanbul, if we're going to head over to Israel for a little bit, or head down to Ethiopia. So, we have a we have options. We're just trying to figure out. Which which ones to and get to? We may to not pick. know for a little while. It, yeah. it may be like you know how we are, J Rock, that we're a little fly by the seat of your pants. But if you and Colette want to go to one of those places with us, it might help us decide, decide. and there then you go. we could meet you there. So J Cat, Taipei, have you considered Taipei? Love to have you. You could probably show me around. <laughs> I, actually I have looked through there because when we were looking at the kind of pseudo around the world, US to Australia, uh, New Zealand. Indonesia, um, middle, up through Korea, like on our trek back north, um, Taipei is one of the places we're considering going through. Um, how hard is it to dry, drive from Dubrovnik to Kator? We haven't done that, but I'm well, going to... I took the boat. Um, but you can you, yeah. you can do it, but you're going between countries. So if you're driving, you're, are you driving yourself? Because when you rent cars, it could be a little complicated at the border. Yeah. Uh, so you got to make sure you can actually drop it off at the other country. Um, but I know there's tons of day trips to go between the two. I took the boat trip that went over there. Um, so it wasn't too hard doing that. So you can look at that, that way to do things. So, um, must see in Dublin. I'll be there for three days in May. The Book of Kells. Yeah, though you, though you only get to see like two pages at one time, it still is kind of cool to go check amazing. out. Um, St. Patrick's Cathedral. Got to do that. What else? If you have three days, I mean, with Dublin, you can actually go, you could go do a day trip to Kilkenny. I mean, I like Kilkenny for a small Irish town mm -hmm. to check out. Um, and there's a train line, I think. There's definitely to honest, buses to go I there. I love Dublin. Yeah. I love We love Ireland. Ireland. Um, Dublin, Dublin's so packed with tourists and it's, it's, it's almost overwhelming. And it, I don't feel like you get as good a taste of, of Irish culture in, in the city. Because again, often that's how I feel about big cities that, you know, they're so international, they're so business, um, but you don't get to really feel all the other stuff. So I would say kind of get out and see something interesting. Hello to our friends in Budapest. Good to see you on there. Um, Michelle, we have not been to Alaska. Um, my friend Carson, she has um, she has some videos on going to Alaska. She did a couple cruises up there. Um, so just look up Carson Travels and no, where, no where's Carson? Alaska that should pop up on YouTube. Um, Jeffrey Bloom, we booked six hundred dollar tickets to Tanzania from New York City. That is awesome. Wow. That is awesome price hey, right can there. We go to yeah, Tanz yeah. Tanzania I might, we might need to switch. York, yeah, from New York in October. I'll be in New York, so I want to just hop on over. That's awesome, and you're gonna love it. Um, and by the way, they say Tanzania. Yeah, they do. They do say that. Um, let's see. Uh, D la da. We have not been to Israel yet. Um, that's where we're looking to go for the summer. That's we had all our, our stuff planned options. up, and things got 
went sideways. So hopefully we'll get down back there this summer. Um, okay, so Martin Brown. This might be a difficult question to answer. I want to travel the U.S. Where would be the top places to visit for culture? So when you're coming to the U.S., mm -hmm. it's such a huge place. I usually tell people to choose a region to see stuff because going to the Northeast and New England, like going from you know Boston to New York, even down to D.C., I guess, like there's a different feel there versus if you're going to the very Southeast, like if you're going to Savannah, Charleston, Atlanta, New Orleans, there's a different vibe there, different culture there versus Texas versus going on the West Coast and California stuff versus – Pacific Northwest. So basically where you're going, you're going to have a different kind of culture when you're there. But if you want like the traditional kind of like, I want like museum kind of culture, you have places like New Orleans. You have places like Chicago, New York, yeah. Boston. Um, those LA. ones, LA, you know, for those kind of things. That That's some stuff I would probably put in there. Um, so Tommy B. Hello, Mark and Jocelyn. Hello. Uh, we have a 24-hour layover in London in late July. Can you suggest what we can see? Thank you. Go I, I and I. Uh, so Tommy, get a hotel. Okay, uh, because with 24 hours, there's no point in like trying to lug your stuff around or whatever. Let the airline hold your bags. Just have um, have enough, have your stuff in your day pack so you can go to the hotel, drop your things off, and just go around in the city and see stuff. Um, you can see plenty of things in a day um, when you're going around because London is just and one of those the, cities. Make sure you're there. Um, what the the museums are closed on is it Monday? Yeah, um, and like the which British, kind of sucks. yeah, the British Museum really is free, but there. British Museum is probably the one museum you really should go to mm -hmm. when you are there because the Tower of London is like twenty five bucks or more, um, so you could do that. Um, but like just seeing Buckingham Palace, walking around Piccadilly Circus and Leicester Square, you know, eat in Chinatown and and hit up British Museum. That'll that'll give you a full day of stuff right there. So you you get a taste. So. Excuse me, the next time you're going to London, you can have a better idea of what you want to do. Um. <clears throat> on, I, I, this is this is interesting to me, Bubba Spartan. On our Greek trip, I want I warned my wife I'll probably cry the first time I see the Acropolis and other sites that will be home for me. Have either of you cried at the majesty of sites around the world? I do it all the time, but the first time was my dad when my dad took me to Greece the first time. And I was sitting in the middle. He had the aisle, and there was a little bitty old yaya sitting at the window. And she had her window open and she's looking and I look around her and I see the Acropolis and I'm just, I start sobbing. I'm practically in her lap and she's just sitting there patting my back, rubbing my back. And I don't even know what she was saying to me, but she was just whispering, calming words to me. And she thought it was just the most amazing thing that I'm crying. But I cried at that. Um, I, I, I cried in, um, in Rwanda every day because there was something that hit me it, it was usually the people they're just so helpful with one another and doing great things so so it's not always necessarily just sites but there are definitely places um i cried the first time i saw any of palladio's buildings um you know just definitely things that yeah it's okay to do that too so ryan johnson visiting germany in june and have two or three days free to visit a neighboring country should we visit prague amsterdam or copenhagen all three are well worth it. Um, I would do Prague one, Amsterdam two, Copenhagen three in terms of the, which ones um, are the probably ones that I would go see. Um, so it just kind of depends where you are on your Germany trip when you're there. So I, I would do it in that order. Um, thank you for liking my hair. Or were you talking about her hair? I, I don't know. So there is that. Oh, they're very kind because next we should <clears throat> visit Wuhan. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to put you in so, time out for a little bit, okay? Just so. calm down on mm -hmm. that stuff right there. So, um, Sorry. Do you know this? the answer to this? What are the age restrictions on renting a car in the UK? Is it 20? I, I don't know. Google it. That's my advice right now. Um, I find that Europe is a little bit less restrictive in the age requirements for renting cars versus the US, the 25 thing. And the thing is that 25 thing is just you got to pay a huge upcharge to be able to rent the car. Um, so that's, that's one of those things there. Um, but I would say look around and try different um, car, like Europe Car or Avis or Hertz and look at local car places because sometimes local car places are a little bit less restrictive because um, they're like letting things go. I know when we went to Crete, we rented a car from a local agency because the red tape was significantly less uh, doing that. Uh, let's see, more questions. Um. <laughs> Spectrum. I live in Florida, so the southeast is great. But if I had only one trip, I would choose the northeast. Can I, 
Connecticut, New York, uh, PA, and such great museums. Um, you're right. And actually, sometimes I feel like that's like a great place unless people are coming over here and have some tie to a specific region. I would kind of agree with you, Spectrum, that the Northeast is a really great place to start because that's where America started, right? I mean, you know, all of our all of our big history is up that air in that area, um, and it's lovely and quaint, and it definitely has its own kind of feel. Um, not always as open as like the South. I mean, you know, the South you're going to be taken into Grandma's kitchen, and that's a possibility, um, and you wouldn't find that in the Northeast. But not to say that people aren't nice; it's just a different kind of thing. Um, so I agree with you. It's a good place to start. Yeah. Oh, so um, the person I was asking about the driving thing. So Martin Brown says UK driving is 18 for car hire. So so that's a helpful thing. Thanks, Martin. I appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you. Um, Creighton 2004. Did you ever watch the Travel Channel growing up? What inspired you to travel? So for those of you who don't know, the Travel Channel actually used to have travel <laughs> programming, not just ghost hunting and paranormal activities. Oh, was that a ghost? I think I heard something. Oh, it's, it's, it's. Stop you know, it, Mark. God, I, sorry. I have a video actually on there explaining why the Travel Channel doesn't show travel anymore, um, if you want to look that up. But um, what I think what inspired me to travel, which is funny because we didn't go anywhere when I was a kid. We went to Ohio for our vacations all the time. I think part of it was my grandpa was a minister, and so he had retired, and they had him as a retired minister going around to all these places. So he'd go be a, a guest minister for two months or six months all over the U.S. So he would send us postcards. From all over and I, i'm really sad that when we'd read them and my mom would just throw them away and i'm like now i wish we would have saved those because now i save all the postcards i send to the kids and my parents and my aunt i get cards I send to my grandma who's passed away 20 years ago like i have all these cards from all over and it's just like a nice little thing to do and um and i remember i never really considered like international travel of, like i never would have thought like if you talk to me when i was in junior high or high school i never would have thought i would that we would be doing this but I remember there was this uh, exchange student from South Africa, and she told me, it's like, you should try the study abroad stuff. It, it, you know, it's, it's exchange student. It's pretty fun. I'm like, I don't know. She's like, oh, I go for a summer. And I ended up going to Australia for a summer. It was a fantastic experience. And it just like, from there, it's like, I got to go. I got to go. So it was just like, I got to go, 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 go. And that's now a many decades later, I'm still go, go, go. Hang on. Stop. Don't move Sorry. that. Um, uh, a Silvers. I'm visiting Ireland for nine days, visiting above Belfast down to Cork and then the Cliffs of Moher. Um, cool. Is arriving in Belfast and leaving from Cork recommended or is Dublin for both doable? I actually kind of like that idea of that open jaw thing and and being able to make your way down yeah, rather you, than you, make a big circle. Yeah, you can do either one. Just make sure if you're going to be renting the car, make sure the car company is cool with you from one place to another place because sometimes they're not. So that that's where they get you like, oh, you're going to leave it in some other airport or some other place. That's a special 400 relocation, 400 pound or euro relocation fee. So be careful with that. So Monique and B, Paris, where do you recommend staying? Hotels versus apartments? So if it's just you, a hotel is fine. Mm -hmm. But if it's multi two of you or more, apartment, just because the, the space. Especially if there's more than two people, um, absolutely yeah. an apartment. Like for us, with Caleb is now 13 and 13 is the cutoff. So he's considered... An adult. an adult by hotel standards, so we have to get everywhere in Europe now. We have to get two hotel rooms. Be, uh, well, unless they have like a triple or a quadruple. So, um, which a lot of times it's just better getting two usually. rooms. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so definitely look at being no, you cannot have your own room, darling. With Caleb, no, that is not that is not happening. Sorry, <laughs> Liam just asked yeah. if he and Caleb can have their own room. <laughs> No, um, I would I would say an apartment. Yeah. So okay. Creighton says he used to watch Samantha Brown and, and Anthony Bourdain. That mm -hmm. inspired them. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that are out there. Like we enjoy, like we used to watch a lot of PBS Create. They, they switched their programs. We don't get Create now like we used to because we, we used to watch um, Travel Scope a lot oh, yeah. and Burt Wolf and those ones it was kind of interesting to see I mean a lot of them we're, were older we just things, don't watch so. TV anymore yeah we don't watch TV anymore that that really what it comes down to we don't we, watch TV we just don't I mean the TV's only on if I'm folding laundry for a long period of time Amy H I've heard you say that kids can't go into pubs in the evening our daughter is 15 um, will she be allowed in nope nope still it, too young yep 
It just it depends where you're going. Well, it depends how she, old she looks. I guess but, maybe someone might let her in. Yeah, it, but also depends on on the type of pub you're going to. It's more of a restaurant uh, versus that, so you have to think about those things. But yeah, make sure she has her phone charged up so she can stay at the hotel while you go to the pub. Uh, so there is that. TJ, what do you guys do for a living that allows you to travel um, so much? Going to college, but I want to see the world. Well, if you're going to college, you can see the world by doing study abroad programs. And I actually run some study abroad programs. Yes. Through, I'm a university professor, so that's why I have a lot of free time. So go so. ahead and get your PhD. And um, No, don't get <laughs> – I'll tell you right now. Don't get a PhD unless you want to be a professor because – Well, that's what I'm saying. You said yeah. you must oh, travel, right. okay. so get your PhD. Become, well, you can you can travel boss. for other things too. A lot of the thing is is we really make a financial commitment for traveling uh, in terms of what our money, where our money goes and stuff like that. I mean, aside from the books, I mean, the only thing we, we spend our money on is travel. So – and, and Walter's World um, shirts and stuff. So, <laughs> Marie Magnus. Um, hello, sorry I missed the beginning. I'm in Sweden and was out and about. That's wonderful. I hope you're enjoying Sweden. I bet it's a little chilly there right now. Yeah. Zanga, will Brexit affect travel from Ireland to Northern Ireland? They are still trying to figure that one out. So no, no one can really say anything about that. Benjamin, we have not been to New Zealand yet, but we're looking to go next summer. I'm actually looking to take students to Australia, New Zealand. Um, Next summer, summer 2021. So there's that. Hi, Jimmy. How are you? Oh, Jimmy UK. What's up, buddy? Uh, let's see. <laughs> Rose, I had my own room when I was a kid. I was lucky. Yeah, well, they had their own room here. Liam wanted to have it so he and his brother could just have a room to themselves. Like when we With travel. Yeah, hotel. But I, I would worry they would destroy the room because they like to wrestle. Like they come home from school and just start <laughs> wrestling right away. I'm like, Where, wait, how did you? What? And they just... No, that's not happening. Yeah. Um, okay, so Gabriella Carolina has a good point. Hot tip for everyone. Travel to your own area. If you were a tourist that was visiting the area you live in, what would you do? Or you'd be surprised what treasure you find in your backyard. This is very true. This is one thing I've found. Because um, when I first started traveling a lot, you know, when I was in my early 20s, I would go visit my friends I knew around the world. And I'd be like, oh, they, they'll know what to see in their hometown. They'll know where to take me. And I found that when I would do my research, I would know more about these people's hometown and their countries than they did. Because you think about it, it's your town. Like where I live now, I know where Guitar Center is to take the kids to guitar lessons and drum lessons. I know where my work is and I know where Culver's is and that's it. And you're like, wait, I don't know about this other stuff. Because you don't, you never have the reason to be a tourist in your own town. So when you start looking at those things, you realize I can actually see a lot here. And I think mm -hmm. for a lot of parents, that are scared to take their kids abroad and stuff like that or, or travel. I'm like, you know what? Start by doing a travel. Like, look, today we're going to the Children's Museum and then we're going to go to this restaurant or we're going to see the farms outside of town. There's things you can kind of get people to understand, like get a better feel of where you live and then you can go out and explore more. But also, um, you know, we want people to travel no matter what. And, and I understand that we are hugely blessed to be able to do this kind of travel. But travel isn't just international or even across the state. It, it truly can be right down the street. Um, you know, you might look at like a small town near you. Um, there's one 20 to 30 minutes away, and they've got some really cool little museums. They're not big. I mean, we're in the middle of the Midwest. They're not massive museums. But they're really cool, and they're done really well, and they've got people running them that have um, a great amount of love for what they do. So... Go and look, and, and I think that, Gabriella, that makes a wonderful, wonderful point. Um, so definitely find the treasures in your backyard. Um, how do you, Brian, how do you manage to sleep on the plane long haul flights? I don't. <laughs> Mark I, I could ever. not sleep for days and then get on a plane, I'll be like. You get zombified, it's terrible. When I get on a plane, um, first I take, if it's a long haul thing, I take something called Jet Zone, um, and it's a homeopathic thing, and it kind of, it's, um, it helps you just get on the right sleep cycle and, and eliminates jet lag. Um, but I also, like, will take melatonin, um, and red wine. <laughs> like, I'll take a melatonin and a red wine and be like, see you in the morning. Um, that really helps. But I don't really sleep for long periods of time. I think that if you... If you get first class and you get one of those lovely lay flat seats, then um, you can lie down and go to sleep, sure. But we don't do that. <laughs> so going back to our staycation thing, Michael Mann has one. 
One of the best things that we did with our kids was vacation for a week in our home city. We went to all the museums and parks and had a great time, fun and relatively inexpensive because you've already got the stuff taken care of. Right. And what's nice if you do that, if you also factor in the eating out part, then you're not doing dishes at home. It's kind of like taking away. That's the thing is when you do a staycation, you don't just want to make it like a working vacation where you're at home doing all your work. You want to make sure you make it kind of like a fun trip. Like you're going to go to that fun restaurant. You're going to take the kids to, you know, the, the bounce house or whatever. And you have it that way. So when you come home at night, you're also still vacationing at home. So you're making sure you're playing the board games and you're doing these things as well. So that can make it really nice. Um, so Kevin Kirkham, you've probably been asked this before, but what do you teach at your university? I teach marketing. Actually, we have another channel called Professor Walters. And if you go on there, you'll see a bunch of my videos that I have for my students um, that talk about marketing and stuff like that. Um, with, with travel, do you ever get invited to stay in people's homes? People are so generous the world over. Yes, we get all the time. People are like, hey, come here. You can stay with us. I'm like, thank you. I mean, we appreciate, I mean, it's amazing how wonderful people are. And we've met some, like Scott Neal was on here earlier. He's celebrating his 30th anniversary with his wife. Aww. And like, we'll meet up with people and stuff all the time uh, to do some things and stuff like that. But I always, I, I don't, I would never want to impose on people. Um, those kind of things, but it's really nice if people do ask. But we will stay like with our friends that we've made friends over the years and doing things, so we'll stay oh, with them. Oh, yeah, like we always stay with certain people um, because we've known them forever, so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to feel better, but I'm pretty puny still. Thank you for your support. I appreciate it. So we've had, because we've been on for an hour and a half, so people are cycling through the, the coronavirus again. So I'll, I'll give our usual spiel on this. There's not a ton of information about the coronavirus out there. Um, and, you know, is it a seven-day incubation period, 24-day incubation period? Can it live on the, the ground? Can it live on the dead death, stuff like that? There's not a lot of information out there. That's why it's important to follow, like, the CDC and stuff like that and see their recommendations. And right now the recommendations are wash your hands for 20 seconds with hot water. Don't be touching your eyes, ears, nose, mouth, stuff like that when you're walking, uh, when you're going around. And, and don't travel to areas that are, have the, the infection. So that's their advice right now because there's not a ton of information out there uh, to really help people. That's what's so weird about it is like, can we get some kind of information, like something? And there's just, this isn't really much right now. And Jalu 3, has the coronavirus impacted the travel industry? Oh, yeah, huge. I mean, mm -hmm. there's something like 7 million flights between the U.S. and China yearly. And now all these U.S. airlines have banned flights from China and to China. So, I mean, right there, I mean, that's a huge chunk. I mean, you're going to see bottom lines in companies getting nailed all over the all over the world. Let's think about it. I mean, factories are closed in China. Where was your laptop made? Where was your clothes made? Probably made in China. Now you have all kinds of supply chain issues are going to be coming up. You're going to see price hikes and certain stuff. Um, I mean, the GDP of the world is going to take a hit from this for sure. And we're only at the beginning of it, as they say. So that's it's, it's pretty scary. Yeah, it's scary that way. So um, Michael Wilson, secret special spots in southern um, Spain, Andalusia or Andalusia, depending. OK, on so Andalusia has got because you have the coastal so which is overrun by retiree. Well, it's nothing wrong with being overrun with retirees. They're there for a reason. It's got great weather. But it's sometimes it's hard to find um, a lot of Spanishness along the coast, especially in the Costa del Sol. Maybe look at Costa Brava instead, going up over there. Um, I always I feel like Valencia is a very underrated city. It's a big city and people know about it, but people don't go there. Uh, oh, they do go there, but not as many people do because they think, well, it's a beach town. Yeah, it's a beach city, but also has this incredible Art Deco architecture throughout the city and all kinds of stuff you can do there. Market there is fantastic. Um, you also have like. I like Ronda. That was a nice one to go to. Ronda is cool. Which, that, that was nice. Um, we went to Cadiz, which was, you know, that was okay. I thought Cadiz was okay. I like Cadiz, but I feel like that's not so secret. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing is in a place like that, there is, there are. What about the Alhambra? Is that still? That's in Granada. That's, um, that's pseudo. Is that? Done over there? I it's not quite. Oh, anyway. So watch, doctor. Best place to visit North America and the Caribbean in March. March, anywhere in the Caribbean is nice because the weather's nice then. You're, you're good to go. Um, in terms of the U.S., March, you're still, I mean, Southern California, Texas, anywhere in the south because it gets too hot in the summer, but they already have good weather in March. So you're going down there. That's why you'll see all the spring break people will be going down to Galveston, Texas, and, and Panama City and stuff like that. Um, walking tour GPS app recommendations, please. Um, 
example, I want to use it in Austria to do the Sound of Music sites by myself. So there's actually a lot of, like, Rick Steves has his walking tours. You can download the podcast. It'll have you on your tour and stuff like that. Yeah. These tours are really good. Yeah, and and so there's that. Um, You can also do it whereas you have the walking suggested maps where you have the itinerary yourself, and you can just download, like, maps.me of where you're going to go and just follow the path that's on there. Yeah, because there are a lot of people that'll put the itinerary out, but it doesn't necessarily come with a GPS sort of thing. So you kind of make couple the two things together. Yep. Um, let's see. <laughs> Shake at Taipei. Love the American videos. Makes me want to come visit for a, for a visit. Come home for a visit. Yeah, we, we've I've done a lot of U.S. travel lately. So I've got like the Don'ts of Atlanta out there. I got some more New Orleans stuff coming. Um, Don'ts of Alabama. Don'ts of the South. Hopefully I get the Don'ts of the South out this week. Um, maybe on Wednesday or next Saturday um, so I can get that. So there's a lot of different stuff out there. Um, but I, I felt that, like one, we did a, I have a Don'ts of Kansas City video. And it's, I mean, it's almost got 200,000 views already. And you know, people are like, well, who's gonna watch that? Well, there's people that do travel to these places. And it's funny, because if you look on YouTube, uh, there's all kinds of stuff for London and Bali, but going to El Salvador, there's not much. Going to Kansas City, there's not much. Going to Milwaukee, there's not much. Like, let's try to put some of those things out. So. We're trying to help tourists that are coming to the U.S., but also Americans that want to travel in the U.S. So we're trying to do some more of those. So I'm glad to see that they're they're resonating with some people. Um, um, how can I travel to France and be there for a while and not spend much money? I want to improve my French and live there for a few months during the summer, but it is so expensive. Find a small place to stay. That's yeah. usually cheaper it, than yeah, than smaller like towns. Yeah, and, and here's the thing: when smaller towns, one. You can rent stuff significantly cheaper. Two, the food will be less. Three, also, people will be speaking more French there. There won't be as many tourists there. And so, therefore, you're kind of forced to speak it. Um, Because I know, like, when I lived in Germany, I lived in Berlin. It's such an international city. It was hard to get my German any better. When I lived in Sao Paulo, I mean, there's so many international people in Sao Paulo. It's hard to do it. But, like, Buenos Aires, there's a lot more people that are speaking English. Because I was trying, when I was studying in Argentina, I was trying to go to another city. But no one wanted to go there. So, they, they moved me to Argentina the Buenos Aires program and it was tougher. I had to go out and make sure I tried to find locals that would speak with me in Spanish versus just in, um, just in English. And so that's one of the things the small towns gives you that a more of an opportunity to learn the culture and the language. Yes. How, you fine with my knee for some reason? Petting your leg and oh, stuff. I'm sorry. I didn't know if you were like, shut up, Mark. Um, how many days do I need to visit main spots in DC, Washington, DC? I would say probably at least three. Um, it's there's a lot to see and you can get burned out rather quickly um so definitely three possibly four um there was another one right above that and i don't know if you got to it because again i don't feel well and i'm not paying very good attention best place to visit in north america and the caribbean in march yeah i already went through that okay good love you paying it so totally paying attention uh, yeah it's okay you're not feeling well i can tell you're starting to lose steam again Mm -hmm. um Okay, so Michael Wilson had a few things on here. Michael was helping out. Thank you for all the comments, Michael. But um, so Michael was talking about there are language exchanges you can visit to meet some people who want to learn English. Good way to learn a new language and make friends. That is true. And, and it's called, like, you might look up tandems in, in make sure it's language tandems, uh, in, when you go places. I actually did that for Spanish and Portuguese, <laughs> where I would meet people just to practice my English or practice my Portuguese or practice my English with them, practice my Italian with them. You'll have that, and that'll be really helpful because it'll be like you speak a half hour of English, and then you have a half hour of Italian or a half hour of French, and this kind of helps each other kind of grow, um, grow from there, which is really nice. Have you ever considered moving to Europe? <laughs> uh, I've actually lived in Europe quite a few years, um, over a decade. Like a lot. I <laughs> a had a lot. baby there. Um, yeah, we, so yes, and, we've considered it. Yeah, we've considered <laughs> and it, and we've done it. And we've done it. We've considered moving back too. Um, mm-hmm. It's not out of the realm of possibilities. It's just that right now the kids yeah. are in the that age of like you know high school is coming up for Caleb, and so we want to make sure he has a a base for his high school four years of high school. We don't want to move him around for that. We want to have that kind of solid base. Uh, so there's those things that are other influencing. I wouldn't be surprised when both the kids are out of the house. We wouldn't move abroad again for sure. My family's from what? northwestern Germany. Oh. Have you been to that area, Linden? Um, Linden? Oh yeah, I've been there. Nice, nice, nice thing there. That's nice, J-Rock. Nice. Oh, nice. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I have been there, Jason. You can always ask me, buddy. You got my number. <laughs> we can, we can give you some ideas. Uh, let's see. Spectrum likes her videos in the U.S. I'm glad to hear, it, buddy. Uh, you tour, 
Teacher of SA, you two are so cute. Thanks for sharing your travels with the world. I'm glad we can share. It's really, it's, it's a blessing that we've been able to do all this travel, but it's a blessing we get to share this with people. Um, I know we don't always do a lot of videos where it's us doing the stuff because we've, we've already done it because we like to focus on doing the things and then telling people about it people. because I, I see, I've seen bloggers and vloggers and they're like doing everything, holding their little gimbal. And I don't want to go every single place holding this thing. Like, and here I am walking into a building. Here I am eating my food. Here's me. I'm like, I want to enjoy those things instead of, of uh, filming every single second of it. Uh, so that's why sometimes we're like, oh, it'd be cool if you could show us how it works. And we do do that sometimes with some of our blog vlogs. But we want to help prepare you to go and travel on your own. So, like, here's the information you need. That's why you, we don't have the, like, five-minute-long intro of really cool drone footage that you'll never see in real life. It looks cool, but you're never going to see it as a traveler. And so we like to say, hey, let's just get to work. Let's get our stuff going. Here's the don'ts. Here's the shocks. Get ready to go and have a good time, you know. And so, so we try to help out the most, as much as we can. Um. I'm going to say goodbye because I'm hitting the wall again. I think I'm going to go back to bed. So right. it was love nice you, to baby. see you all. I love Goodbye. you too. Good all right. Better. See you. And also, when these shirts come online, they're like super soft. I think I might just go sleep in it. <laughs> so there is that. All right. So, all right. Oh, wow. We're almost at two hours here. This is a nice long live session. I like this. Um, let's see. Michelle Bank. I enjoy and appreciate live music. I don't hear you mention this often. So live music, we love live music too. Um, should be probably the best country to go to for live music, I feel, is if you go to Ireland, because a lot of the pubs will have bands in the evening, like nine, 10 o'clock at night, and just enjoying the live music. For me, live music really kind of amplifies any kind of atmosphere in a bar, kind of stuff like that. So we do, we hit up concerts, we do stuff like that when we go. Um, <laughs> so there's that. Um, the least and most amount of money you spend on a trip. Here's the thing, people ask me, how much money can I spend um, when I travel at certain destinations? You can spend as much money as you have. Um, there, there's always someone that will take more of your money. So there's no there's no too little or too much. Um, there's always people that will take it. So it's hard to really kind of answer that way. Um, Jimmy UK, what's your favorite food ever? I think one of my favorite food, I have a lot of different favorite foods, obviously. It takes, it takes a lot of favorite foods to get this, this size. Um, I think for me, uh, Bigali con Arno, which is a egg, uh, I think it's an egg noodle pasta from Veneto region with a duck ragu sauce. That's one of my favorite things. Um, when I come, when I, I remember when I used to live abroad back in the day before you had, you could get everything anywhere around the world. I'd have my mom ship me uh, Kraft macaroni and cheese. Um, I mean, I, I know it's silly. Like my, my roommates always knew if I, we'd, if I'd been drinking a lot the night before, cause they're like, Oh, I woke up and there was a Mac and there's that blue box. We knew Mark was out partying last night because that was like my, you know, <laughs> late night snack some places we went. So there is that. Um, oh, Veggies by Eos. Hi from Peoria, Illinois. Not too far away. Um, I'm looking to go to grad school in either Lubbock, Texas, Fayetteville, Arkansas, or Greensville, North Carolina. Any tips of any of these cities? Um, if you get a chance to go visit them, I think they'll answer your questions right away. Um, they are very different. Um, that is one thing. But if you're going to be going to grad school, you're not going to get to really enjoy a lot of the city anyway because you'll be doing work and research. So that's one thing I would look into. If you're going to be doing your PhD, I mean, then I would do more research in terms of the lifestyle you're going to have there. Like, where would you live and what would you have? Because Lubbock is more spread out and Fayetteville is, you know, for the University of Arkansas, Greensboro. I think Greensboro is the one I like probably the best of the three. But it, it's all it's all up to you. So there's that. Uh, Sandeep, things do in Seattle. So Seattle... There's some actually really good museums because they had so much money that they helped really support a lot of museums in town. But I like the Museum of Pop Culture the best in Seattle. Uh, the Botanical Gardens there are pretty cool too. But it is it is a pricey experience going to Seattle. And a lot of places they'll automatically put like an 18 or 20% um, service like tip on your bills at restaurants. Even though the service isn't good because they have to pay uh, like $15 an hour or something like that. So it is uh, it's something to think about. Um Thanks, Fuzzy Lon. I hope she's feeling better, too, um, for that. Let's see. Kyle, Kyle, have you ever been to South Carolina? Do you recommend it? Yeah, South Carolina's not bad. Um, Charleston is where you want is, is the place to be. Columbia, the capital, I looked at working. I was interviewing at the University of South Carolina, and it would look kind of nice, but their, their, their thing is that, like, you're three hours from the coast and two hours from the mountains, and the coast and the mountains are really nice in South Carolina, so that would be the things I'd focus on. If you're looking for more city stuff, I'd go up to North Carolina and look at the Research Triangle, Raleigh, and stuff like that. That's where I'd probably go for that one. Um, 
Creighton, I'm glad you like our do's and don'ts videos. It's very nice to hear. <laughs> Brian Moreno. I'm Morgan Jocelyn. Thank you for answering my question. You're the best traveled YouTubers, <laughs> hands down. I hope Jocelyn gets well. Thank you, Brian. I hopefully I answered one of your questions. Hi, Brigadier. Yeah, our, our, our dog. <laughs> Brigadier, climb. So, uh, yeah, so obviously, Brig, they, I'm going to guess the mailman walked by or someone rode a bike by our house, which is weird because it's snow outside. Uh, so there is that. Um, let's see. Let's get the last few questions in here because at, at, at two hours, I probably should start doing some other stuff today. I just wanted to get this live feed. I, I tried to do this one earlier today because I, I know we had fans in Europe and Australia that hadn't had a chance to get some of our other live feeds because we've done them in the evening time. And it really didn't wasn't really like feasible for them. So I hope this can help get some people um, some questions and stuff. So and answered and and you know for those you asked about the coronavirus and things like that, we've actually covered that a few times in the video so far. So you can watch the replay, which should be live. This thing when it finishes, they like put it back up, so it should be up in a in an hour or so. So that could help you go through some of those things. Um, <laughs> Michelle, I'm glad I could bring some joy to your day. Um, Jay, Jay Hi, Mark. Any plans to visit South Korea? Actually, we were looking at that for summer 2021. When we go down to Australia, New Zealand, and then kind of our plan is to like come up north and then fly back to the U.S. from South Korea. And actually, my dad worked in South Korea for a number of years. He never took us. My mom and I are still bitter about that. Um, when he worked there, he's like, oh, yeah, it was great. There was so nice. And the food was fantastic. I'm like, why didn't you take us? Oh, I could have. But like, thanks. So got to get there. Uh, for sure. Um, <laughs> thank you, Schmidt, for the kind words. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So Joe Ness, I'm planning on moving to Berlin for uni. Any advice on living in Berlin? I, I actually lived in Berlin for two and a half years. It is a cool city to live in. It's a bunch of different neighborhoods you're going to have a good time in. Um, plenty of It's really cheap to live there because they expected so many more people to move to Berlin and they didn't. Uh, so it's a lot of project work. Like you'll see a lot of people that are just there like freelancers because it's cheap living and cheap eating and cheap drinking. So you'll have a good time when you're there in great museums. We got plenty of videos on Berlin that can help you out. Um, Luke, I have not been to Kiev yet, so I cannot give you any advice on there. Um, so Vivi, hey, do you, do you plan to revisit Norway anytime soon? Actually, this is one of the things we're kind of thinking about, not this year, because this year's stuff's already bu booked up, uh, but for 2021, um, maybe taking the boys because the boys have never been to Norway or Denmark. They've been to Finland and they've been to Sweden, but they haven't been to Norway and Denmark. So we're thinking about doing like a Norway Denmark trip to uh, to get some stuff there. So so it is it is in the works to getting there for the boys so they can see it and going back. Let's see. <laughs> so young Kim going overseas for the first time in May. Awesome! Congratulations, your first trip abroad. Going to Italy for two weeks, very cool. Thank you for your videos, they're perfect for answering my questions. And, and I'm really glad we can help, that is, that is awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, Guyan, UNS TV, I caught you talking in Lima, Peru. How much were you spending per night in Miraflores? Uh, for restaurants, it wasn't too bad. Um, it was cheaper than the US. Uh, hotels were cheaper than the US too. Um, one thing I will say, the prices you're getting quoted um, if you have a local travel agent do it for you, they'll get a lower price than what you're getting online. Um, that's one thing I found. Um, Mino Christina, have I ever been to the Chocolate Festival in Obidus? I've been there twice, actually. I've taken friends there. I've also been there for the um, for the Medieval Festival, so it's a good time. For those who don't know, Obidus is a, Obidus is a small village um, north of Lisbon. Um, not very convenient to get to from Lisbon because of how the buses were, but it's well worth a day trip to go there. And it's a, it's a beautiful walled little town, windmill on the end and a castle on the other end and all kinds of cool stuff. Actually, I believe the sea used to go all the way up there, but it's been silted out. So now you don't even, you're like, wait, the sea was here? Yeah, it was, but not anymore. Um, sorry, okay, Michael Wilson. Sorry if you already answered this, but how often are you actually traveling uh, your video Pacing makes it look like you're always on the road, but I know you record them maybe release later. Yeah, because what I'll do is I don't want to release like 10 videos set in El Salvador at the same time because people, I mean, two or three videos max from one location in a row, then we'll switch to other locations. But we'll film a lot and we do travel quite a bit. Like, you know, I went on four different trips in 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 January and I have three trips in February. And so really kind of it just depends. So we actually do travel quite a bit. Let's see. Visit Sweden. Yeah, we'll get back there, Colin. Don't worry. We had some. We've had. I actually taught there 
few years ago, and then we were back again two years ago. No, I taught there in 2015, and then we were back in 2017, I think. And then probably when we do the the Denmark and Norway trip, we'll probably pop, obviously pop Sweden in there as well. So we're gonna get there. Bubba Spartan, thank you, buddy. I'll let Jocelyn know. Um, I'm glad we could help you with your questions and stuff, and we really appreciate the super chat. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. <laughs> thank you for your videos on Ar Mar Martin Pela. Thank you for your videos on Argentina and taking a bouquet boost to Uruguay. It made the travel very easy, and we had a great time. Yeah, that was one of those things. That was one of those trips. Of like, we got to make the video about taking the the, the ferry over because there was such little information that was really helpful. That's why, like, I'm going to uh, England here in a couple weeks, and I'm going, and I'm going to actually film, like, I'm going from, I'm flying into Heathrow, then I'm taking the train to York, and I'm like, look, if you want to know how to get there, here's my experience of getting to Heathrow, then getting to York, so you can see, like, here's your options for the trains or or whatever, so, or the you want to take the, the tube in all the way to the station, so we're, we're coming up with different ideas and different things, so we're, we're trying to give some stuff to help, like, some hands-on kind of stuff. The problem is, is some of these hands-on one, I do those a lot when it's just me. And so it's kind of hard to hold like the little camera thing and then like, okay, I'm going to buy uh, an Oyster card or a, a ticket here. And so you can see how to buy your ticket in, in you know, Germany at a kiosk or on the, in London on the tube. So there's some things, but we're trying to do some of those to help out. So that's cool. Thank you. Um, Colin McKenzie, have you ever hosted a small group of travelers for a trip overseas? I've taken family abroad um, many times. I actually have taken probably uh, 10 to 12 uh, university groups. Uh, like my students, I'll take and go teach abroad and take them with me. So we'll do that. Um, mail care. Has travel helped your kids with school? Yeah, they rock in, in, in geography and history. They do really well in that. So it gives them something to talk about. Um, my, my oldest sometimes shakes his head when his, sometimes his teachers would like pronounce a city wrong or, or be wrong about something. And he's like, no, that, that's not how it is. Though I remember when Caleb was in first grade, he got in trouble his first day of school at a new school. And the teacher, like he came in, he'd been to like 20 some countries at the time. He said, he got, cause Caleb just got to his 50th country at 13 when we went to El Salvador. So he was probably like at 20, 22. And so they were doing like, oh, we have a new student. Let's get to know you. And he's like, well, my name's Caleb. And I was in my 22nd country. And the teacher's like, don't lie to the class. So his first day of new school, they're like, you're a liar. And he came out of school the first day. He was crying. I'm like, what's wrong, buddy? He's like, my teacher said I was a liar. I'm like, what happened? She's like, I told her I was in 22 countries. She said, don't lie. I'm like, what? I went straight back to the teacher. And I said, look, he, we travel for a living. He's been to all the 22 countries when he was first grade. And, and you know, and, and that's not nice. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, don't say sorry to him. You, you go make his first day of school better that everybody in his class thinks he's a liar. You know, and so sometimes there's been the, the bad side of the things, you know. So uh, it's kind of kind of crappy sometimes but for the most part it's been a good experience for the kids um and and they they realize that it is a it is a blessing i remember a couple years ago when kayla was like we were sitting there talking and it's like you know we have something a little bit different this is kind of kind of special what we do i'm like yeah i mean being able to see the world he's like yeah it's pretty cool i'm like yep it's one of those like you know win moments for a parent like oh they're getting it it's really kind of a nice thing um okay last couple questions so Ola Olesen, will the coronavirus affect traveling worldwide? Yes, it will. I've talked about that about five times through here, so you can watch it again. I'll go through like the economic impact and, and different things to look out for. So there is that. Um, Kyle McInnes, what was your most embarrassing moment on a trip with family? Um, I know it was embarrassing, but it was funny. Is uh, When Caleb was three, we were in Guimarães, Portugal, and they have a big sign, metal sign. It's like, oh, this is a historic site and stuff like this. And and Kayla, and it was like pouring down rain, and it's the only place where we were like out of the rain. And Joss and I are looking out because it's a stone city and all this kind of stuff in the stone castle. And Liam, Liam, you know, turns or not Liam, but Caleb is like turns around, and we're just standing there. And all of a sudden, we hear this bam, and then this, and we're like, what the hell is that? And like we're like looking around, we thought like maybe like a rock fell and like. A bunch of water was falling or whatever and we turned around and it was caleb and he was peeing and he was three and he was peeing and he was hitting the metal sign but it was he had to pee so bad it was just making this huge sound i'm like oh my god dude don't mom okay you gotta go and i'm glad you're going by yourself now awesome you know it was one of those like yes you're going pee and you're, you're not peeing you're you know, it was just um it was interesting so <laughs> michael wilson how dare you let your children leave the us i know i know um other things Last one. Oh, on, well, 
Andre, good morning, buddy. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be hopping off here. We've been on for two hours. Um, let's see, Julie, what's the best amount of time to stay in Berlin? Um, I would do, you got, because Berlin is a huge city. Like it is huge. I mean, it's, I mean, there, you have the old East, the old West, the new center. So you could do like, you know, a, a day on Museum Island and you can do a day exploring the West and those things there and going to the Schlottenberg Palace and a day in the East, East Side Gallery, Wachauer Strasse, all those kind of things. So there's a lot of stuff in between. Um, so I would say at least three days for that. Um, Andre, yes, I do recommend Thailand. You have a good time when it's there. It's a very cheap place to go. That's why you see so many travel blogs from there because a lot of travel bloggers will go there and live there because it's so cheap and they'll make tons of videos and it's all right there and they look like they're living it up, but it's not really expensive to do a lot of the, excuse me, a lot of those things there. Same thing in Bali, um, you'll see that. Um, Lorelai, thank you for, for catching us and being on here for a while. Thank you, John, for, for keep sticking with us. Um, last one I'm gonna do, and I've talked about this a little bit before, but JF's writing, hey Mark, are city travel passes like the I am Amsterdam card worth it? So passes like the Paris card, like the Barcelona card, like the I am Amsterdam card, um, they can be worth it if you're going to go see a lot of places. So what I always recommend when you're looking at those cards, look and see what museums are actually included because it's not always that all the museums are included. So you might be like, well, you know what? If the museum I want to see isn't included, is it worth it? And also, some of those things, the price, you're like you have to see like five museums. You may think, I'm going to go to five museums when I'm in Amsterdam. But after you go to the Rijks Museum and you go to the Anne Frank House and you go to you know Van Gogh's Museum, like you're like, I'm kind of worn out. Am I going to get the bang for my buck? And so what I usually tell people about these passes is think of it more like a glorified um, travel card. It, it, you, because most of them come with free public transportation. So you use it for free public transportation. And it's kind of like, get out of having to get in line to buy tickets for the Metro line. Is that worth it? Okay, then it's worth it for you. And you're gonna see some sites. But if you're gonna see a ton of sites, then yes, it's worth it. Especially if you're gonna be someplace for a week and you get the week long pass. It's just a, it's just a convenience kind of thing you're paying for. And also sometimes they do have separate lines for it in certain cities, so that can be helpful too. Julie, I'm, you're very welcome for every single video. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. Uh, thank you, Colin, you're welcome for the time. Thank you. Um, King Tony, I, I, we talked about that. Um, make sure you're using your, wipe everything down. Bring your anti-back wipes and wipe everything down for the kids. Handles, sides, screens, all that kind of stuff. Make sure you have all those things there. Um, anyway, I'm going to take off. I've had a wonderful two hours talking travel with you. I'm glad you also got to come down for a little bit, um, but she's back in bed now. I can hear her back in bed, not being very happy right now. Nader Juan, good to see you up there. Yes, we speak a few languages. Um, <laughs> there, there's all kinds of that. Yeah, uh, try to say Fox in German and not get in trouble with your teacher. Just saying that in terms of there. Anyway, I'm going to let you go. I wish you all the best. Thank you, everybody, for a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. All the people that left Super Chats, Thank you so much. Your support really makes a big difference. And all of you that are watching, all your likes and subscriptions and all that stuff mean a lot. If you're interested in joining up and becoming a member, click the join button down below. We actually have more live feeds where it's a smaller group and we focused much longer on topics, specific topics. So there is that. So wish you all the best. Look at the next couple of weeks. You'll see our new Chichen Itza and that chicken pizza t-shirt coming out. And uh, we'll say bye. Oh, hello from New Mexico, 934-505s. Thank you very much for the super chat. We really appreciate it. And we'll say good night or good morning or good afternoon, whichever one you're doing. Bye.